Now we are ready to race for 400 miles. Line them up, let them rip. Ready, 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 ready. Free clearing. It's time to go. It's about to get wild. Big, high, puffy clouds. Whoa. Oh, I get dizzy every time he does that, Artie. 80 degrees. Look how humid it is. 72% light breeze out of the northwest. Forecast is for no rain. We'll have a look at the starting lineup across the bottom of your screen. Again, a draw for starting positions among the top 12 in points. 13 to 24, and then 25 to 36. Kevin Harvick, four wins on this season, but look at that go-kart out in front at <laughs> GoPro Motorplex in Mooresville, North Carolina. That's Keelan, and that is Keelan's very first racing victory. There's got to be a proud Papa Jeff in car number four. And let's dial him up and ask him about it. Hey, Kevin Harvick, Jeff and Mike, the Fox Sports Studio. She got us? Hey, four. Hey, man, you've been racking up some wins and putting some trophies in the case lately. But I want to ask you about the recent winner in the family, Keelan, winning that first go-kart race. Tell us what that was like. Yeah, you know, Jeff, uh, as you know, uh, seeing your kids succeed is, is something that you really can't put a price on. And being able to actually be there and witness it with our whole family was was something that was that was pretty special. So a lot of cool trophies, but, you know, that, that little go-kart trophy, uh, and seeing his smile on the face and being with him every step of the way of everything that he's done is pretty special. So a lot of pressure today uh, <laughs> with him winning yesterday. You put a lot of pressure on me this morning before I left. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. And it does put some pressure on you. So what do you got to do to get a clean sweep for the Harvick family this weekend? And uh, what's it going to take here today in Kentucky? Yeah, I think today you're just going to have to survive here a little bit, see what the racetrack brings and, and then you know, start working on your car and try to keep track position all day. So a lot of things to uh, to wrestle with today, um, you know, as to what's right and wrong. But hopefully our Hunt Brothers P support Mustang handle it good and we can have a great race. All right, well, good luck. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you, Jeff. That's Kevin Harvick. Let's check with our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Larry, we have very little experience racing cup cars here in the daytime. So what are you looking for? Yeah, Mike, there are not many pages in the notebook for these type of conditions because we've only had one daytime race here, and that was back in 2013. The only thing that's about the same is it's still in the state of Kentucky. But I will say one thing, in a day race, Pretty much the track stays constant. Very little change. But Jeff talked about the traction compound. That is an unknown because I think it will change, especially in the closing stage of this race. But that said, let's take a look at our race analysis. We're going to go 267 laps for 400 miles. The stages are 80, 80, 107 to the checkered flag. Pit road speed, 45 miles per hour. Fuel window 62 to 66 laps, and Mike, a competition cost at lap 25. Remember, you can't fuel the car until that caution. Thanks, Larry. Last week, uh, a harrowing incident for Ryan Blaney's pit crew on pit road, a multi car jam up at the head end of pit road. There's Brennan Poole coming very close there as Wade Moore leapt onto the roof. Zach Price, the tire changer, was caught between the two cars and although injured, hustled over to the pit wall and out of the way. Jamie Little has an update. And Zach Price did suffer a lower leg fracture. Good news is it doesn't require surgery, but he will be out for the foreseeable future. Filling in for him starting this week is Curtis Thompson. Curtis Thompson to my right. He is a 16 year veteran on pit road. Recently he's been on LaJoy's team and he's a member of the Penske development team and that's where they were able to bring him up to this 12 team. Curtis just told me he was able to practice with these guys three days this week and is very confident and was very Loved how good and he's given us a thumbs up said how great these guys are Mike and he just loves the opportunity. It's rough circumstances, but he hopes to step up and do his best here moving forward. Thanks Jamie. 
mentioned earlier Jimmy Johnson is back there's the number 48. He was out for covid 19 but had two negative tests this week and eligible to return. We listened into him and his team. All right folks good afternoon from Kentucky. I want to start out by saying it is fantastic to have our pilot back behind the wheel. JJ, we're glad to have you back, man. Fans, thanks for your continued support from home. 48 guys, but we're going to go get them today and for the whole rest of the year. All right, forward, boys. Let's go. Cliff Daniels there, crew chief for Jimmy Johnson. Excited to have that seven-time champ back behind the wheel. And uh, unfortunate set of circumstances. Uh, and now... Here he is back in the behind the wheel. Out in front of the 38 car field is the all new TRD Camry. Facing the race. Kyle Busch Joey Logano on the front row. Two cars had to drop to the back for inspection issues. Martin Truex who's won two of the last three here at Kentucky and Matt Kenseth uh, the driver who won the one and only daytime cup race at Kentucky will start out back. Mike a lot of anxiousness right now if you're those drivers you've been watching the Xfinity truck races and seeing crashes in the first turn not knowing what kind of grip you're going to have through these first couple of corners in that first lap. Pace cars in they address themselves to the start line Kyle Busch has elected the outside he is the control car. So Logano cannot beat him to the start line on the initial start of the race and we're off in Kentucky. Kevin Harvick with a big moment going into turn three. That's that flat section of this racetrack that makes Kentucky Speedway so unique compared to other mile and a half tracks. Already three wide as we're starting lap two. With that lack of grip and that inside lane hasn't scared off Joey Logano. He's still battling down there in that very bottom lane. Trying to get by Eric Amarola. Now his teammate Brad Keselowski coming to the outside. Now you see the traction compound. There it is down in the corners. And there they have added a strip of it in the middle of one and two and in the middle of three and four to aid the low groove. Well, so far I'd say it's helped, Mike. We'll have to wait and see what happens at traction compound throughout this race. Kevin Harvick looks like he started off this race very loose. Not a lot of grip in the rear as Matt DiBenedetto is going to go to the inside, possibly take that position away. And yes, he does. You can see even Kevin Harvick in the main area of that traction compound, Mike, where we've seen all the grip so far this weekend's racing, even Kevin Harvick's. Uh, in that group still didn't have enough grip to hold off to Benedetto. You've got to imagine Rodney Childers is on the radio telling Kevin it'll come to you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Be patient. Be patient. And you know what? The way Kevin Harvick's season has gone, there's a very good chance it will come back to him. And here's another guy that's got to be happy to show up at Kentucky. Three wins under his belt. Brad Keselowski loves this racetrack. And right now he's got to be loving his race car. He's right on top of these two in front of them. Kozlowski started sixth. Jimmy Johnson in 15th. And here's Ryan Blaney looking to try testing out that bottom groove. Going to get that right front fender right to the left rear quarter panel. Jimmy Johnson trying to pull him back. Just not quite there yet. You can see, hear how much out of the throttle Ryan Blaney is as he's outside of that traction compound. That's going to open up the door for Tyler Redd to come to the inside of Blaney. It's 
see how Reddick fares down on the bottom of the racetrack. As uh, at seventh place, Chase Elliott had a look at Kevin Harvick. And nothing there. Larry McReynolds talked about it in our pre-race about you know how few of notes you have from day races here not to mention as we're trying to possibly uh, going to see a, a, a lead change here Eric Amarola going after our leader Kyle Busch but you know you have the traction compound the, the grip of, of this big spoiler and the downforce in these cars 550 horsepower day race so many variables right now that nobody has a clue what this race is going to start like or how it's going to end and progress throughout the race. You saw Joey Logano send it in there but didn't have the grip to run all the way through the corner two abreast with his teammate Brad Keselowski. Well, Brad Keselowski's running that very bottom groove. He likes the way his car's handling right on the yellow line. That's going to open up the door possibly for an outside move if Logano can get there at least down to one and two. Almirola single file behind Kyle Busch who will lead the first nine laps of this race that is significant because nine is the number of laps that Kyle has led on all the mile and a half tracks so far this year just nine laps and nine today. You can see this Eric Almirola I didn't think he was going to be able to hold that bottom groove but he certainly did he's going to make the pass on Kyle Busch. I thought that 10 car looked really good coming off the of turn four down the front straightaway. As he closed up on Kyle Busch, I did not think he could hold it, but he did. Nice move. Oh, yeah, good job. Almirola taking the lead. So Almirola will lead lap 10 after Kyle Busch was out front for the first nine circuits. It's Ford ahead of Toyota with Alex Bowman, the first Chevrolet, in fifth. Fifteen green flag laps complete in Kentucky. Remember competition caution coming at lap 25. Here is Joey Logano. One of the inside on his Penske teammate Brad Keselowski. Yeah Brad 
went up to use that traction compound, tried to cut down to the bottom lane that he's been using, but Joey Logano was there. Let's see if there's any contact. No, no, I don't think there's any contact, but he definitely loosened them up. I think uh, the two were being so careful to stay off each other, it allowed Bowman to shoot the gap and jump right in there. Well, we saw some four and even five wide earlier in the weekend in the Xfinity series. How about this? Well, you can see they're coming up to pass Joey Gase. That's going to slow down the two cars of 17 and the 48. Chris Buescher and Jimmy Johnson stalls them out, allows Clint Boyer to go around and by, and then goes uh, there goes Reddick to the outside of Jimmy Johnson. Joey Logano closing in on Kyle Busch. This is for second place. Now Denny Hamlin has dropped eight spots since the green flag. Kevin Harvick uh, is down three. Hmm. You know, Mike, especially with the 550 horsepower underneath the hood and that big spoiler, it's all about momentum. You just can't lose the momentum. So as you're trying to make a pass, and we're seeing a lot of passes happen down in turns one and two, uh, you almost have to regroup it takes you a lap or two to get that momentum back. Uh, you got to watch your mirror make sure you're not going to lose positions trying to make that pass and you regroup to regain that momentum and try to find another opportunity to make that pass. So um, it's, it's kind of risky to, to dive down underneath somebody in the middle of the corner. You see right there same thing with Kurt Busch. He tried to get right to the rear bumper of the car in front of him, try to maybe loosen them up. I think was that Blaney in front of him, and it, and he had to check up. And when he did, lost all the momentum that allowed actually Blaney to go by him. You know, guys, Blaney started in the ninth position. He dropped back a lot at the start of this race. It's almost like they they had the air pressure way down on that 12 car. Now he's starting to recover. Well, boy, one car that's. Not had any problem going through traffic. This car right here, the 19 of Mark Truex Jr., up 15 positions so far, Jamie. Yeah, Jeff, and every time we come to Kentucky, all the other crew chiefs are looking at that driver right there, Martin Truex Jr., a two-time winner here again, one of the fastest cars last year. But they failed technical inspection this morning two times, so he had to drop from ninth all the way to the back. The car is okay, but Jeff, to your point with this new package on these cars, James Small, his crew chief, told me Martin has had to learn to drive these cars differently at this racetrack. Yeah, this is this is a track where both ends of the racetrack are totally different. Like you've got a lot of banking, a lot of momentum, and the speed through turns one and two, but you have to get on the brakes in turns three. It's very flat, and the car really wants to slide the back out on entry, but then lose the nose through the center. Very hard to set the car up perfectly for both ends. Wow. Now, Alex Bowman has jumped uh, to fourth place, but we listened in. Yeah, I think the car is pretty good. It's just hard to give feedback on because of how numb it is. Yeah, jump four. We got a lot of guys talking about, you know, feeling numb through the PJ1 and, you know, through the green track and all that stuff. Uh, you're doing a great job. Well, also, this is a track. It's very hard to feel the tire that Goodyear brings to this racetrack. It, it, it just, you know, the sidewall and the, the you know, hardness of the uh, rubber compound just makes the car slide so easily when you push one end of the race car versus the other. So it's hard to really know, is it balanced or do you just need overall more grip? <laughs> right there, you see Austin Dillon fighting the grip on that number three car, but they're three wide down the front straightaway. Here comes Kurt Busch. Thought he was going to go for four wide. I think he would have if he could have. <laughs> yes. And Mr. Excitement up on the outside, Ricky Stenhouse. Well, so, we, and we've seen, if you go down the apron on this front straightaway, Mike, it's like a ramp. The car will get wow. airborne. Same tire here as they ran at Las Vegas earlier in the season. And Mike, the biggest difference from this tire combination to what we ran here at Kentucky last year is the left side is a softer compound, has more grip than the left side tire. Thanks, Larry. Here's your competition caution after 25 laps completed. Kyle Busch led the first nine. Eric Almarola, the last 16.
Major League Baseball on Fox returns July 25th. Fox Saturday Baseball is back, and America's home for baseball this summer, as always, is Fox and FS1. Welcome back to our national pastime. Well, here at Kentucky, 27 laps, working 27, 26 complete. Now, Mike, we're going to have just under 50 laps to go to the end of stage one. Watching the times, I know you'd love to put four tires on that car, and I think that's what most of the teams will do, but I will not be a bit surprised to see some teams that are fighting for track position that feel good about their car right now. We may see some two-tire stops right here. Thanks, Larry. Uh, Quinn Hauf will get the free pass, one of four drivers who got their best career finish last week at Indianapolis. The others were Cole Custer, Garrett Smithley, and Josh Balicki. Uh, pace car is going to be kind of lonely out there. <laughs> Ooh, almost some contact coming to pit road for a few. Remember last week we had that big crash on pit road, a very narrow pit entry at Indy. And it came during the competition caution. Penske teammates. So each far, getting four. Yeah, going for four. Yeah. Jamie. Eric Almirola had led nine laps this season already. Led today. Saying he's just a little tight to start, but that car has been a rocket ship early on. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get political, but I'm voting for Bacon. Here's your Ram race off pit road. Almirola wins that one. Joey Logano gains a spot. Chase Elliott up three. Kevin Harvick plus two. First caution of the day in Tampa, Florida. Is Eric Almirola leads in Kentucky.
getting ready to restart. 29 laps complete. Here's today's Ford performance track facts. Ford this season, nine victories in 16 races, 36 top five, 68 top tens, and seven drivers in a playoff position, leading all manufacturers in all those categories. Yeah, pretty impressive season so far. Only about halfway through this season, Mike, and they're looking really good here today. Two Fords on the front row on this restart. Almarola chooses the outside. He and Logano. Kyle Busch, Chase Elliott. Logano was really good on the original start. Was able to run side by side with Kyle Busch through turns one and two and three and four. See what he can do with Eric Almarola. You'll listen to Chase Elliott spotter Eddie DeHunt on this restart. Chase calls up. Be ready. Chase is fourth. Here they come to the Geico restart zone. Twenty. Ten. Five. In. Boy, really delayed start there. Almost outside of that restart box by Eric Almarola. Still on the inline. I think Joey Logano, ooh, so Just close to getting up in front of the you. 10. Even. Door. Quarter. Just to 22 now. Quarter. Good, tucked in. Four wide coming off the corner. And he Hamlin right in the middle of it. You can see that time the inside lane didn't work out so well for many of these guys. But Kevin Harvick's kind of stuck in that outside lane. That car's still really loose. See Denny Hamlin. There's a three wide. Oh, four wide oh, yeah. here with Reddick, Busher, Stenhouse. Denny Hamlin thinks. Gonna, I'm going to wait for another opportunity. I don't want to be in the middle nope. of four wide. Good place battle here. But I get it. If you're going to have four wide, you're going to be bookended by Reddick and Stenhouse <laughs> on one end or the other. Well, you know neither Count one on of those it. guys are going to lift in the next corner. Exactly. <laughs> Makes it fun to watch. That was Reddick again way down on the bottom, almost to the apron. As 10th place, Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski battle with Austin Dillon. Uh, on that uh, competition yellow, Ty Dillon had a commitment line violation entering the pits, so I had to restart tail end. Well, Keselowski going backwards here. He's on the inside. You see Martin Tricks Jr. already ahead of him. Here's the 48, Jimmy Johnson going to the outside. They'll have to duck back in line. That'll put him back to 14th after restarting eighth. Kozlowski. I mean, these restarts are going to be wild and crazy all day long. We saw the 18 of Kyle Busch. I think he started third. He's all the way back to 10th. Luka just set the fastest lap of the day. Cole Custer, 179.79 miles per hour. As Custer's gained five spots since the restart. Mike, he's one of our Rookie of the Year candidates. We were talking on our conference call the other day. Our rookies are starting to come to life. We've had three different rookies get a top five finish in three of the last five races of this year. For Custer, it was fifth at Indy last week. Best career finish, second career top ten. And uh, Cole Custer, a prior Xfinity race winner here. There's your rookie standings. That's quite a rookie class. I mean, Tyler Reddick, two time Xfinity champion, John Hunter Nemechek, Christopher Bell, Cole Custer. I mean, these guys are going to be around for a long time, impressing all of us in the Cup Series. But you know, with me, there's always a but. <laughs> We've only had one rookie of the year get a top 15 finish in the first nine races here at Kentucky. That was Eric Jones back in 2017. I can attest to how tough this racetrack is, not just as a rookie, even as a veteran. Um, never got a chance to go to victory lane at this racetrack, Mike, and uh, it's because it is so difficult to get both ends of the racetrack right. There's a battle for fourth place. Ryan Blaney trying to overtake Kevin Harvick. Jamie? 
and Kentucky is just one of two tracks that Kevin Harvick has never won at here in the Roval in Charlotte. Right now for Kevin Harvick, the car has just been edgy since the drop of the green flag. They're telling him he's being, he's losing the most time between three and four. That's where they're getting him as Ryan Blaney tries to take him on the inside. Yeah, and what we saw in that first run with the four car, Kevin Harvick, it started really loose just like it did on this run, but it came to him, Mike. So I think we're going to have to keep an eye on that car and see what it looks like at the end of these runs and towards the end of the, uh, this race. Is this the 18? Maybe has some debris on his hood. You could see him all over the rear bumper of his teammate, Mark Trix Jr. Saw the hood flaps coming up when he got right to Truex's bumper there. Now a little space between them as and there goes the 12 of Blaney yep. in turns three and four like Jamie mentioned looks like Blaney was able to get position coming off the of turn four complete that pass on Kevin Harvick. You know Mike and Jeff Ryan Blaney has been so strong at the mile and a half tracks this year. We've run five races this year at the mile and a half average finish 4.8 in fact fifth of the last four. Let's go back and take a look at that pass. Well, Blaney quite a ways back going into turn three. Looks like, oh yeah, Kevin Harvick had a loose moment right there where the car got sideways on him. He had to check up and correct. That goes back to that momentum I talked about, Mike. The 12 of Blaney able to stay in the throttle, hold that momentum. When the Kevin Harvick in the four lost his momentum, 12 goes right on by him. There's your telemetry, yeah, into turn three. You can see how much, no, I'm not seeing any break, but they're having to get out of the throttle a lot. Right where he got wide open, that's about where he got loose the last time through there when Ryan Blaney went by. 182 miles an hour at the back stretch end, and here on the curving front straightaway, 183. Yeah, and look how much more speed you carry through one and two. A lot more throttle all the way through one and two. You can see maybe losing the front end a little bit off of the exit of turn two. Oh, yeah. That's almost. But almost 10 miles per hour slower in the middle of three and four than wow. it is one and two, Mike. Kyle Busch has backed up a bit from where he restarted, Jamie. Yeah, not what you'd expect from this 18 team, Mike. He started on pole and slipped back to 11. He's got his hands full. This is what he had to say on the radio. When I went off into three on the first lap there, it just chattered. It's like it never even compressed the nose. And just slid forever. Let's get going. How the overall feel consensus here kind of the same. Like every corner is just chattered. The front tires, I got the front grip. Doesn't feel like the tires or the splitters get compression. Well, you can see the gap underneath that front splitter. Here's the front straightaway, but as it goes in the corner, you can see it bouncing over some of the bumps, but it never seems to get down. See, see right there that gap? You want a small gap because that's what allows the airflow underneath it. But down in three and four, three and four, there's not as much compression as he's talking about compressing that splitter. And it looks like that splitter's riding pretty high through turns three and four. And that's just taking away front downforce that he's wanting. There you see the gap. Yes, not, it's pretty common to see it low on the left front and raised up on the right front on the straightaways. But as you go into the corner, you'll see that right front corner will travel and that should almost seal up to the racetrack through the corners. Uh, but this is, a, again, a tough track to do that with because the speed and the compression one and two totally different than three and four. A couple laps ago, Kyle got passed by Martin Truex, who started this race in the back, so Truex is now the highest running JGR Toyota in 10th. Eric Almirola remains on point in his Stuart Haas Ford ahead of Chase Elliott's Hendrick Camaro.
50 laps complete in Kentucky. That's Ryan Blaney, our advanced auto parts cam. He's driving through the corners one handed and we'll show you why. Uh, here's what happened just a couple of laps ago. Car jumped out of fourth gear. Blaney grabbed a gear, got going, and then radioed in. This broke something. Drive shaft or something. Something just broke off the face here. Gonna need to get me a bungee cord or something. Copy that. Well, you can hear Ryan Blaney as he rolled out of the throttle and turns one and two and went to go back to the throttle. That's when it jumped out of fourth gear. Pretty fortunate actually for this 12 team that it didn't happen somewhere else because it could have turned a lot more RPM than it did. Didn't sound like it over revved the engine that much. So that might save the engine, but they're gonna have to figure this out, Mike. That's not gonna go away anytime yes. soon. So here's a couple of uh, champions battling for 11th place. Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch. Now earlier we talked about Travel on the splitter and that gap there and Kyle Busch and what they might do to improve that car Larry. Yeah Mike one report we did get from Kyle Busch once the air pressures came up when they made this last pit stop the car was getting a little bit better but Jeff Gordon was talking about the right side of that front splitter being up off the racetrack. Well one thing they can do you have these ride limiters right there you can add one but what I think they would want to do if they do want to make this adjustment is actually pull one of those shims out that just lets the car travel a little bit more on the right front and we'll get that splitter down on the racetrack. And Larry you know based on the air pressure is coming up that raises the car up so you wouldn't think that would actually make the car better because as the air pressures come up I just wonder if when the air pressures come up the grip level on the tire maybe goes up a little bit to where it's optimal and, the, and he likes it or the balance changes for him over that long run. Well what's got to come up for Kyle Busch are playoff points. Look at the comparison last year to this for he and his teammate uh, Martin Truex who pretty much led the league in playoff points last year. You get playoff points by winning races and by winning stages. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, when we think about the dominance of this 18 team, Kyle Busch, our defending champion, what he accomplished, not just last year, but even the year before, hard to believe he's sitting here at this stage of the season 2020 with zero playoff points. And we've seen where that changes your, you, you know, your whole playoffs. I mean, to get from one round to the next, that's what allowed, I think, Kyle Busch to even get to be in that final four at Homestead last year to have a chance at the championship. So who got all those playoff points in the first half of this season that Kyle Busch didn't? One fellow who got a whole lot of them, his teammate Danny Hamlin. Jamie? He has his hands full today, Mike. He started up there in 12th. He's back in 27th right now. Remember the last lap last week? They blew a right front, a huge hit into the wall. Right now he says he has chatter, and he told his team, I know I've got to go, but he's got his hands full, and he's given it all he has back there. Hammond around Bubba Wallace for 26. Now they're about 26 seconds behind the leader, Eric Almirola, who is running laps in the 30 second range. And Mike, going back to Denny Hamlin, this is that time when as a team, you're Joe Gibbs racing, Kyle Busch starting up front on the pole position. And you go, you know what, this weekend, our teammate's been so good, Denny Hamlin, we're going to go with a setup similar to his. And then all of a sudden, Denny Hamlin has a similar issue. So uh, you wonder if how, how close those setups are on those two cars. There's a look at Al Marola. About four seconds back of them on the track, but the race leader, one and three quarter seconds ahead of Chase Elliott. Now, Ryan Blaney, after getting his car back in fourth gear and getting everything back together, went on to pass Kevin Harvick, and Blaney is now in fifth place. Apparently, no ill effects of that car jumping out of gear. And uh, using a bungee cord, Larry, to hold that shifter in fourth, boy, that's an old short track trick. Well, it is, Mike, and, and looking at the data, it turned about 9,300 RPM, but only for about two seconds. 
I know things have changed since my days as a crew chief, but that was part of our race morning checklist is we had a bungee cord that was already in the car and just hooked it into the side of the seat. That way the driver could just reach down there and put it around the gear shift should he have a problem like what Ryan Blaney just had. Well, I thought it was interesting, Larry, as we watched Ryan Blaney go through one and two, pretty much one hand and held that shifter in fourth gear all the way through one and two. His car's driving really good here. He goes again through turns one and two. I mean, barely even getting out of the throttle. I can tell you the vibration that goes through your hand and through your body when you're holding on to that shifter is pretty intense. But down here in three and four, he's not even holding it in fourth gear. So he feels very confident that whatever's going on, it's only in one and two. You can actually see his thumb, how it vibrates when he puts his glove over on that thing. Third place, Matt DiBenedetto moving up. Mike, I can I can attest to uh, needing some new dental work after having to hold that car in gear all day long. <laughs> and leader Eric Almarola is in some pretty heavy traffic. And it's uh, John Hunter Nemechek and Corey, Corey LaJoy, LaJoy just ahead of a Wallace. Going to have to pick his way through here. And these guys are going to fight hard for these positions. They want to stay in that lead lap. 17 to go in this stage. They don't want to give up that position. But, you know, they've got their own race that they're battling with, and it's a long day. Eric Almirola is going to continue to work his way through traffic as we take you Fox NASCAR side by side. Sixty eight laps complete. That's Michael McDowell in the yellow car just ahead of Eric Almirola McDowell twenty seventh. Last car on the lead lap. Almirola maintaining two point three seconds on Chase Elliott the first Chevy Martin Truex in tenth nine and a half back is the first Toyota Fords occupy most of the top ten. You can see how good Eric Almirola's car is working. Just pulls right up to the rear bumper of the 34. Michael McDowell gets underneath them. 
Goes down in the next corner, completes the pass. That car is on rails right now. And I would say Ryan Blaney's problems are solved. He just ran the fastest lap of this race, 180.4 miles per hour. Be curious to see if maybe that, you know, this this car was just for Ryan Blaney. Just maybe it wasn't all the way engaged in fourth gear after the restart. Is that going to be something that that continues? Is he going to have to drive one-handed all day long, or I think later in the race when they get three and four wide on those restarts, he's going to have to have or want to have both hands on the steering wheel. Riding on board here with Chase Elliott. Coming in second place, eight laps to go on this stage. To Benedetto, oh, Whoa. a moment for John Hunter Nemechek gets really loose. He has to work his way up the racetrack. That allows Joey Logano to go to the inside of Matt Benedetto. I was just getting ready to brag on him on what a great run he's having. And here comes Ryan Blaney into the picture. Yeah, they all had to pedal it when uh, Nemechek had his moment. Jamie? And I was going there as well, Jeff. Matt Benedetto doing a great job. He started 10, running fourth right now, about to give that up to Ryan Blaney. But Matt, this is his worst track here, average is 31st. Never even a top 10, but he's never been with the Wood Brothers either. Right now, he says his car is pretty good. I think he's the only driver happy with his car. Well, I could tell you who loves his race car. If Matt Benedetto likes his race car, I know who loves his. Other than that transmission, Ryan Blaney has a rocket ship right now. But you can see that little darker area that uh, Ryan Blaney just ran on that bottom lane. We see it also down here in three and four where they put the right sides down there, Mike. That is not traction compound. That's actually an area where the racetrack, I believe, has done some kind of a patchwork. So that's a part of the pavement, maybe a newer uh, uh, layer of pavement on the racetrack in that lower groove. A little bit of that at each end of the speedway. Uh, Ryan Newman now. About to go a lap down here, perhaps. He is 26th. Last car in the lead lap. Next car ahead of him is Denny Hamlin for Eric Almirola. We've seen this before at this racetrack, Mike, where Kentucky Race Speedway is one of those tracks where you can hit it and be so good, and you can miss it a long way and be very far off. And that's what we're seeing for a lot of these cars back there, 23rd, 24th on back. Hey, they went to uh, advance out of parts and picked him up a bungee cord. <laughs> Quite possibly. Uh, th this is where Ryan Newman becomes a kidney stone, harder to pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, he drifted up the racetrack there in three and four. I, listen, I don't know if there's a race car or driver out there that is tough to pass for Eric Almirola right now. That car is just so good. And Newman gave him plenty of room. Fought with him for a lap, and then moved aside. Only three to go in the stage. Now look at the gap between Almirola and the next car ahead, because that may be why Newman was so willing to lay over. He could end this stage as the free pass car. Uh, that's extremely likely here with just two to go in the stage. Well, besides the fact he couldn't hold back Almirola and the fact that there was a gap, I agree, Mike. Good chance he will be that free pass car. Boy, two of the best ever at Kentucky here, Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski, and they're battling, but it's for 13th place. The other thing these two drivers share is watching their teammates up ahead of them having a little bit better day. Like Martin Truex, who started out back due to an inspection failure and is now in the top 10. Well, Ryan Newman's going to come back to try to get back one of those laps. Well, he's, he's got to because that car, if that car just ahead is only one down, and it's not, it's uh, more than a lap down. That's Garrett Smithley. It looked like three they, laps back. Yeah, I think Eric Almirola got held up in traffic a little bit. 
As long as he doesn't get to Hamlin, Newman is okay. And he didn't. The stage is over, and Eric Almarola has his second stage win of the season. Eric Almarola uh, voting for Bacon and winning stage one. And we're off in Kentucky. An uneventful first stage, but for the competition caution at lap 25, otherwise all green flag racing. Kyle Busch led the first nine laps, and Eric Almarola, who had never previously led here in Kentucky, has led 73. Pit roads open. Where they've not been since lap 27. And here come the lead lap cars. Ryan Newman will get the free pass. There he goes. See a little service. It's pretty hot there in Kentucky, putting some ice in the window for Joey Logano as the nine comes into his pit box, Jamie. Ryan Blaney works his way down pit road as they count him down in fifth. Car has been really good other than the issue of holding that shifter in place. They're just going to hand him the bungee cord. They'll put it right in the window for Ryan to be able to fix that himself as they jack the left side of the car. Get their work done a four tire stop. He has that bungee cord. We'll see what he can do with it if that'll help him moving forward. Logano and DiBenedetto each pick up a spot. Clint Boyer, Martin Truex get two. Kyle Busch gets three. Adam Stevens and crew did a great job there. Comes that bungee cord and, and a drink. Mike, what do you say we dial up Eric Almarola? Sure. Stage one winner. Hey, Eric, this is Jeff and Mike, the Fox Sports Studios. You got us? Yep, I got you. It's loud and clear, buddy. Ah, well, you sound like you're in a good mood, and you ought to be, man. That thing is on rails. Look really good out there. Last time you won a stage was at Pocono. You finished third. What do you got to do today to get that win? 
uh, the same thing we did in stage one. <laughs> Just keep it up front. The boys are on pit road are doing a great job. Uh, Booga and all the guys on this special team have been doing an incredible job. Uh, five top fives in a row. We definitely got momentum on our side. So just got to keep doing the little things right and executing and um, the driver's got to do his part so appreciate you guys and uh, appreciate everybody in Smithville running this cool vote for bacon paint scheme uh, 10 fans are going to win a lot of free bacon so go to voteforbacon.com all right well right now bacon's winning the vote so congrats uh, congrats on that stage win and good luck the rest of the way thank you guys He's finished top five in the last five races this season and wins the race off pit road as well. Eighty six laps complete. Should be green next time by. All right. So they handed Ryan Blaney a bungee cord. Now you're strapped in that seat with limited peripheral vision. Uh, you can't see to your right and there's not much you can feel. So what can you do. Well and that carbon fiber headrest and seat are so constraining you really just don't have a lot of movement with your arm or body not to mention you can't see it. So. The red end is opened up to pit around the shifter there. The other side's not. I don't know where y'all go. Kind of too long. Can't really reach far back. Focus anything. Double it around something. Come back to it. Maybe on the next caution. Yeah, exactly. More, he's, right now he's going to have to hold it in that fourth gear and give it another try later. Brad Kozlowski had to pit a second time to tighten lug nuts, so Kozlowski goes from 16th to 25th. Uh, Ty Dillon speeding too fast exiting pit road hasn't been a good day for driver number 13 except he and wife Haley announced uh, they are expecting their second child in November.
pace cars in. Here comes the field to the Geico restart zone. Nine's coming to you. Back to high side here. It's TJ Mayer. All good. Joey Logano spotter. Yeah, and I'll give Joey a lot of credit. Not from a lack of 21. effort. He's putting it down there on the bottom underneath in that vulnerable position, taking the air off the outside of that car inside of Eric Almarola. Now he's faded back to second as he slid up in front of Chase Elliott. But Matt Benedetto, I'll, you know, I'll tell you what, uh, those Fords are strong today. One, two, three right now. Then Chase Elliott, Alex Bowman, and here comes Ryan Blaney, one-handed one bandit. <laughs> <laughs> Harvick down on the inside. Twelfth. Eleventh now. See if they've worked out that loose condition on Kevin Harvick. Early stages of a run. He's very, very loose, especially in traffic. It came to him, Jeff. He was much better later in that long run, but by then he'd given up a number of positions. And right now he's stuck in that inside lane as Jimmy Johnson, then Kurt Busch, and those Chevrolets come to the outside. Yeah, this is not a position we've seen Kevin Harvick in. Usually, you know, when he's in the back, they do some kind of pit strategy, two tires, something to get him into clean air. Right now he's just mired in a bunch of dirty air. Cole Custer charging after his teammate. Custer has picked up one spot from the restart. And, and one of the things that Rodney Childers and this four team have done so well for Kevin Harvick is to give him a car that's trimmed out. The back of that car and that spoiler is out of the air. It's real low on the straightaways and in the corners. And, and the way they've gotten away with that is Cole Custer's teammate goes to the inside, possibly going to take that position with 13. But that that is something that works really good Mike in clean air if you can get the mechanical balance uh, worked out and they have done a great job with that in that 14 but right now uh, they do not have the clean air to take advantage of that trimmed out race car. On the left the battle for four. Elliot Blaney and Bowman. On the right the fight for 13 Harvick Custer and Reddick. You can see that opened up the door as Colt Custer tries to get to the inside of his teammate Kevin Harvick. Here comes Tyler Reddick on the outside. Let's see if Denny Hamlin's been able to make some significant adjustments. He dives into turn three. Car looked pretty good right there. Reddick in that uh, gold number eight restarted 21st. He's up for 14th now. Seven spots gained and very few laps there. This car looked really good through the center. Look how much he gained on the four. Kevin Harvick through the center of the corner. Talking about Tyler Reddick. Now further back, Denny Hamlin, Chris Buescher. Fourth place. Chase Elliott's going to tuck in behind Ryan Blaney. Feels like Ryan's got the better car right now. See if we can't watch the line that he's running, what his car's doing. Maybe I need to make some adjustments or wait for my tire pressures to build up if you're Chase Elliott. Maybe I need a bungee cord to hook onto, <laughs> onto that bumper of that number 12. <laughs> Throw that thing out the window, yeah. right? <laughs> Come on along. <laughs> Austin Dillon, Kyle Busch, this is for 10th. Well, the, the Bush brothers are, might be battling here, but not for the position they're going to want to be battling for. 11th and 12th right now. Jamie? And Kyle Busch just said he needs to turn better. The car just wants to go straight, and it feels like it's on top of the track. It's just been one issue after another since we started this race for the 18. Ah, this battle's looking similar to a year ago. Kurt Busch slides up in front of the 18. Oh, yeah, we've, brother. we've seen this movie. <laughs> <laughs> but it was for the win one year ago. Tyler Reddick wants a part of it as he keeps moving forward in the eight. 
96 laps complete in the Quaker State 400 at Kentucky. Eric Almarola just ran the fastest lap of the race. Coca-Cola and NASCAR, it's a Sunday thing. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. 102 laps complete. Let's see how the Coca-Cola family of drivers are faring. Joey Logano, runner-up to Eric Almirola right now. Austin Dillon, Denny Hamlin, Brian Newman, all on the lead lap. Bubba Wallace, the first car one lap down, and Daniel Suarez, 31st. Almirola's lead, two seconds over Logano. Ford's in the front four with DiBenedetto and Blaney. Bowman in fifth. Truex, the first Toyota in sixth. Mike, where is Kevin Harvick? There he is, all the way back in 19th position. I'll show you what happened. He was making a move forward here. Well, we saw Reddick go to the outside of Kyle Busch. He loses momentum. Look at this big run by the four car of Kevin Harvick. He dives down into turn three, but he gets down underneath the traction compound, not able to complete the pass. Now here comes his teammate Cole Custer to the outside. Big run, Denny Hamlin, Chris Buescher. All three of these cars are gonna go by Kevin Harvick. And after this happened, two more cars, actually three more cars have since passed Kevin Harvick. Did is terrible. Made it worse. It was bad. Now it's just worse. The paint just loose in the corner now, and it's plowing. And Kevin Harvick, basically, he's bad into the corner. He's terrible on exit. It hasn't been good since the beginning, but he said it's worse now. And guys, Rodney Childers told me one thing that's kept them from winning here: they never had a perfect race car, and they definitely have their work cut out for him today. Well, they've had perfect race cars this year. We've seen that, but uh, clearly not here today in Kentucky. Plenty of time, though, 162 laps to go. It's going to be a tall order for anybody to catch Eric Almarola, who's now led 97 laps today. 
Joey Logano one and a half back 25 cars back to Ryan Priest on the lead lap. As you look at eighth place Clint Boyer Jimmy Johnson. You know the drivers that have combined for 10 wins this year and that would be Keselowski Harvick and Hamlin. None of them are in the top 14. Unbelievable. Well I'm curious to hear from our crew chief Larry McReynolds. Larry is there any kind of strategy play now coming into stage two here. Is it possible anybody can make it on fuel and why are they taking four tires if we're not seeing much fall off. Well I think the reason they took four tires especially on that first caution the competition caution a little bit concerned about the wear. We did hear maybe where the left front was showing a little bit of wear. But we went back racing with 73 laps to go and they had pitted essentially with 77 laps to go in this stage. By my numbers everybody should be anywhere from around four to six maybe eight laps shy. So but I do think it's not going to be a deal Jeff where they break this stage in half. You're going to run it just as far as you possibly can just simply because these tires are not falling off as much and you don't want to get trapped by making a short pit and then the caution coming out and burning. You. So the stage is here 80 80 and 107 laps for the final stage. I haven't seen much of last year's winner here Kurt Busch he's knocking on the door of the top 10 but he does have our Xfinity fastest lap of the race 180.7 miles per hour that was about three laps three four laps ago. Yeah that, I mean it's hard to believe this deep into a run on tires and fuel that you could put that kind of lap time up but Kurt Busch definitely clearly able to do that maybe a little bit of a toe off of a car in front of him and a fast car through the corners. Ninth place battle Austin Dillon Jimmy Johnson as they catch Josh Balicki in the 77 and uh, pull up on Clint Boyer heard an interest an interesting theory this week uh, on how to set the field NASCAR does that with a blind draw the top 12 in points then the next 12 then the next 12 what if you use the fastest lap of this race to set the field for the next race. As long as they're not starting first I'm fine with that Mike I don't want the fastest <laughs> car starting on the front row I came from a short track and dirt track background I like to see cars passing. Well I do too <laughs> but yeah that needs more work. <laughs> of course that's the that's the TV Jeff not the race car driver Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> <Right. mentioning that. laughs> Alex Bowman closing right up on Ryan Blaney for fourth. And look who's right behind him. Mr. I've won two of the last three races here. Martin Truex. Thirty two complete in stage two. One hundred fifty five laps to go in the race here in Kentucky with Eric Almarola in command.
Let's take a look at our McDonald's driver profile on Bubba Wallace. Three top tens this season so far, tying his career season high. Top 15s in five of the last eight. Ninth last week at the Brickyard. And no, that is not an antenna ball sticking up from the roof <laughs> of his uh, Richard Petty Motorsports number 43. Looks like an errant piece of tape well, or something yeah, there. I do believe it's the antenna, but it's like the antenna is, has caught a piece of debris or rubber or something from the racetrack yeah. and is clinging on to that antenna. Now he's in the free pass position. We have not had a caution flag for any kind of on track incident today. Should we get one, he would get back up on the lead lap. <laughs> <laughs> this is strange. Eric Almarola. Now let's look ahead to Wednesday night, which will be our final Fox telecast of the season on FS1. It's the NASCAR All Star Race. Eric currently is in the open, the race that precedes the All Star event, 7 p.m. Eastern on FS1. And Eric has one of four ways to transfer into the all star event. But there's a fifth way to transfer in. Win, Win. <laughs> today. That's right. And that's going to be a wild one in Bristol. Mike, I'm excited about that all star race moving to Bristol a short track for the first time. And uh, Folks, I you're, can... you're going to see things you've never seen before in the Cup Series in Wednesday night's all star race. Uh, this is NASCAR's experimental uh, event each year. So tell them about the lights, because I can't do it without giggling. <laughs> the lights? Yeah. Which part of the lights? The under, the oh, yeah, the underglow. Heck, yeah. Well, I mean, I know it's, we're going to be under the lights at Bristol. Right. But we're going to have a little extra light. Some glow from underneath these race cars ought to be really cool. Jamie. Look at Clint Boyer's car. One cheer. He's got a couple of dogs on both sides of that race car. One cheer works with Colorado State University to try to find a cure for cancer in dogs. They do tremendous work and they support our sport in a big way. But good news for Clint Boyer, guys. I mean, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, but they say they are right on their number to make it to the end of the stage. All right. Another cool thing for Wednesday night. First time in the Cup Series, they have used the choose cone to determine lane choice for restarts. Really looking forward to that. We have an hour special coming up on how the choose cone <laughs> system works. This You'll see that uh, all, Wednesday night, 7 Eastern all, on FS1. All you need to know is when they drop the green, that's cool. That's, that's going right. to be fun. It's going to be very exciting. All-Star Race cannot wait. Jimmy Johnson making some some moves here. See coming up to the rear bumper that 14 to Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer had closed up on Chase Elliott there for a, a, a little bit, but now Chase Elliott's pulled back away. I'm, I'm impressed with some of these cars putting up some of their fastest laps here late in this run. That tells you a lot about tires as that fuel load gets lighter. Those tires are not falling off, and we're actually seeing some very fast race speeds. So that really? will really change the strategy there, Matt. Here's uh, Austin Dillon's team talking tires. He's in 10th place. I think the lap front's going to go the whole way without any issue, or do we need to conserve a little extra? We're going to have to go 20 laps longer on our left this run if we don't take tires than we did last run where we had a small course. So it's just going to be iffy on tires. Yeah, that, that you know answers that question about two tires versus four tires. They Goodyear, as Larry McReynolds mentioned, brought a softer left side tire, give it a little more grip. It's the speeds aren't falling off, Mike, but it is wearing that left side tire out. So um, you know, I, I think that th we're reaching about the limits on that left side tire of what it can go to and how far it can go. But it, boy, it certainly doesn't seem to be showing up on the on the clock. It, it has plenty of speed, even though we're seeing some cords. So 34 laps to go in this stage. Larry, what, remind me, what are your numbers telling you about fuel mileage? Yeah, Mike, I mean, I keep crunching them in here, and I know we're hearing a lot of teams, a lot of drivers like Eric Almirola in this 10 that's talking like they're right on their number. 
But it, when I talked to several of the engine guys this week, the most mileage they were anticipating was somewhere around maybe 68 laps. We went back racing with 73 to go in this stage, and they pitted with 77 to go. And, and if the pace was falling way off, then I may start questioning my numbers, but the pace is just not slowing down. So we see that teams could be as many as five laps short. Hey. And certainly no fuel saving going on right there for Ryan Blaney as he was only out of the throttle about 50 percent through turns one and two. See 8300 RPM into turn three. There's Brad Kozlowski. Uh, a Ford on board camera. Well, that's pretty normal telemetry and. You know, the, the throttle position, so not not a lot of fuel savings going on out there. So I don't know if some of these guys are lying to Larry back <laughs> on how far they can go. How about Chase Elliott carrying our Mountain Dew camera? Have to check up for uh, Josh Balicki there. Eighth place, Boyer and Johnson. I gotta believe, Mike, that as they came up on that lap car, Balicki, that opened up the opportunity. I think Clint Boyer had to check up a little bit, got in a tough position there, and Jimmy Johnson able to keep the momentum and get to the outside of Clint Boyer to complete that pass. 137 laps to go, and only one driver in the top 10 has ever scored a win at Kentucky. Martin Truex. Here are the past winners in Cup at Kentucky Speedway. Think of these drivers and what they all have in common besides winning here. They are all Cup Series champions. Here's Larry with today's right combination sponsored by Subway. 
Well, Mike, there is no question the right combination the nine years we've been coming here to Kentucky would be with our cup champions. All nine of the races, as you said, have been won by a Cup Series champion. There are eight active champions in the field. Now, three of those champions that's never won here would include Kevin Harvick, Joy Logano, and Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car. These two guys, Ryan Blaney and the 12, that just took the lead from Eric Alarola, they hope this streak does not continue today. They hope to find the subway right combination. Thanks, Larry. Ryan Blaney to the front, becoming only the third different driver to lead this race. And we're going to make that today's tied clean pass. You can see Eric Almirola comes up on John Hunter Nemechek, loses some momentum, allows Ryan Blaney to get to the outside. But Ryan, I love this move. He's going to go three wide almost there for a second off of turn four to take the lead. It was a pretty clean pass. See Eric Amarola is down outside of that traction compound, has no grip to be able to maintain the speed that Ryan Blaney's able to maintain. Also wonder, Mike, we saw the 10 car of Amarola really lose a lot of speed over the last couple of laps to Ryan Blaney. I wonder if he's wore that left front tire out. We're hearing more and more about how these left side tires are starting to show some cords, maybe even feel some vibrations. Still driving with one hand. At least through one end of the speedway. Yep. I like watching that water bottle as he goes through the corner and all the G load gets pushed to the right side and how that water starts to wash up into the top of that water bottle. I think now he's just reaching over there out of habit, Jeff. <laughs> Ryan Blaney had only led one lap here in his cup career prior to today. Look at it. Yeah, he's having it. I'm telling you, that's going to really have an effect on his hand over this race. The vibration coming up through that shifter and through the drive line. It's got to be very intense and severe. And I don't think he's even taken a drink of that bottle nope. uh, of water because he's had to his hands full holding that shifter. Jamie? Ryan Blaney extremely focused right now. Said he needs to be freed up just a little bit on exit. That's the only place where he feels they can gain a little bit more. They're looking to pit about lap 149, Mike. So that would be with 11 laps to go in stage two. And Mike and Jeff, that's one of the characteristics of this traction compound. And we talked about that before the green flag. It just seems like the cars get tighter and tighter. The, the front tires don't want to grip as good as the rear tires. Now that traction compound, while it has a lot of grip, it also really grinds those tires. So if your balance is a little bit tight, you're just going to wear those tires out even more. Look at Eric Almirola going to lose another position here to a Penske car. Joey Logano and that pins all four going to the inside, taking second place. I really think the blistering pace that the 10 car, as we see Tyler Reddick hitting pit road, one of the first cars to hit pit road, I really think that he's wore those front tires out. So Reddick becomes the first of the lead lap drivers to pit at lap 144. He had a big vibration, so they called him in early. Anticipating they were going to have to stop under green anyway. And it's very common when you start to wear those tires down to the cords that one of those cords will pop and you'll actually get a vibration because you get down to the cords and wear through the rubber and that tread. And I think what we just saw there will be the norm. You go ahead and change four tires because you don't want to run the risk of just doing two rights and wear the left front out before the stage is over. Reddick was 12th when he came to pit road. There's Bubba Wallace going a second lap down to Blaney. I really don't think that was bad timing for Tyler Reddick. It's nope. you know, just short pity. He just needs to make sure no caution comes out. He'll be in good shape here.
fifth place Alex Bowman Truex was closing but he is headed for pit lane first of the Toyotas to pit. Larry with new tires not being much of a premium as far as lap times are concerned. Think everybody here is just going to run as far as they possibly can. Well I, I do Mike because again and I saw it in last year's race you short pit and yeah you you've got four fresh tires but if that caution comes out you are absolutely burned. Here comes Chase Elliott and the nine car. What I would tell these crew chiefs you can't hide your lying eyes telling me you can make it to the end. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Jamie. Chase Elliott said he got better as they ran there. Once that air pressure came up he thought the car was good but got a little bit tight. It'll be a four tire stop here air pressure adjustment for Chase Elliott who has a little bit different look this week. Oh issue on the nine can't get the right rear tire off for Chase Elliott. Had to go back for another pump on the jack there. So now his Hendrick teammates Bowman and Johnson are in Chase is finally away but that's going to be costly. And Ryan Blaney headed for the pit lane. Along with Joey Logano. Kurt Busch is in. And Eric Almirola. A lot of takers now. Jamie. 12 laps led today for Ryan Blaney in the 12. As I mentioned, just wants to be freed up a touch on exit, but the car has been good as the 10 of Eric Almirola, who's been so good today, makes it into his pit box. Only 10 to go in the stage. Matthew Benedetto now surrenders the lead to pit. Ryan Priest right behind him. Here reports that left front tire on the eight of Tyler Reddick was down to the cords. Got to believe there's a few more on pit road also. Excuse me, that was Stent, uh, Ricky Stenhouse pulling out as Priest comes in to his stall. That dark green car is Matt Kenseth, and here's Harvick. So that leaves Brad Keselowski in the lead. He was last in the pits at the stage break. <laughs> along with Kyle Busch and Eric Jones. Always the last guy out there. Well he's just he's not always the last guy. He's just going to do the opposite of what anybody else does even under green flag stops as Kyle Busch hits pit road and Denny Hamlin. Eight to go in stage two. Kozlowski and Jones the drivers who have not, that's not the, stopped. That's the 10 of Eric Amarola. The way that camber it's done in that tire. You can see how it's it's really eating the outside edge. If that's the le if, if that's the left front, yeah, that would be the, the edge of the tire that would put the most um, grip in that tire. So once you wear through it down to the cords, you just lose all of that left front grip. Jones is in, surrendering second place. And Mike, and that's one of those things that you just can't fix. Not especially under a green flag stop or, or any time quick under caution is to fix the camber that you have in those front tires. You can maybe raise or lower the car up a little bit to help as the two of Brad Keselowski our leader hits pit road. But you really can't affect that camber change. All you can do is maybe air pressure. Or stop more often. Or that. <laughs> and that's not productive right. have not seen a lot of chassis adjustments uh, on these cars today. Oh, oh Matt Kenseth in trouble and that's it looks like the, the left, caution is out. It looks like the left front tire is down or left rear maybe. Caution comes out with six laps to go in the stage. You can see that and car's gone around because you can see the roof flap head. Engaged in oh, the two car. Was he on pit road when that happened? He, well, we're hearing Kozlowski is being scored the leader. We'll check that as Matt Kenseth has brought the caution out with six laps to go. That's what I call in the, stage two. The perfect storm, Mike, is when you're on pit road changing your tires as the caution comes out. Let's see what happens. You can see Matt Kenseth down on the apron, knows he has an issue, tries to keep the car. 
from going up on the racetrack. Luckily keeps it out of the wall. Mike, the reason the two is scored as the leader, where he's pitting on pit road, he's pitting before the start finish line. It goes across pit road. He did not have to move that far to be able to, to be scored at the start finish line, even though he was on pit road. So Brad Kislowski is the leader under caution. Matt Kenseth said over the radio he had no warning. The car just turned around on him. And it's not like they did anything trickery on pit road. They went ahead and got their four fresh tires on that two car. And so the way they are scored is as they hit the finish line, start finish line, just past Kozlowski's pit. See how this track is D-shaped? Now see the blue buildings? Those are the garages. That looks if like you a squint, W. Yeah, that, that's a W. Guess who helped design this track? <laughs> Our old friend Daryl Waltrip. And that's why it's DW-shaped. That's his story, and he's sticking to it. <laughs> I was going to say, man. And I'm with him. That is, that is pretty cool. Yep. And well-deserved if it is. <laughs> now, Kozlowski was 15th prior to the pit cycle. There's Daryl. A uh, statue that they erected uh, in his honor and in appreciation of his help in, uh, to Jerry Carroll and partners in designing and getting Kentucky Speedway built. And Mike, going back to the 42 of Matt Kenseth, he had just made his stop. And we've seen this happen. I think we saw it happen to, to uh, Chase Elliott earlier in the season. When they dropped that jack, that the pit gun hit one of the valve stem cores and knocked it off. So that air comes out of that tire very quickly. And I think that's what happened to the 42 of Matt Kenseth as he left pit road. Now let's take a look and set establish the scoring virtually. Now there is Keslowski. at the time of caution. He has just passed the plane of the start finish line, uh, which runs from the starter stand down and all the way across pit road. And you'll see a lot of crew chiefs choose pit stalls ahead or, you know, I guess behind, if you want to call it that, yep. the start finish line for this exact reason, Mike, because if you're on pit road and you're doing your stop right as the caution comes out, all you have to do is roll across the start finish line and you maintain whatever position that is and, uh, and, and can get a huge advantage. And we see that has worked out so well for Brad Keselowski in this scenario. So. Yeah, he was well down pit road beyond the start finish line area when I saw Blaney go across the start finish line on the front stretch. So gold star to Crucci Jeremy Bullens for that pit pick and for that strategy. It's got Keselowski out front. This is our final point race of the season on Fox. We turn over to NBC beginning next Sunday. But Wednesday night, a special treat for you. It's the NASCAR All-Star Race. Million to win with the biggest stars in stock car racing. And the action starts at 7 with the open from Bristol Motor Speedway to set the final four qualifiers for the NASCAR Cup All-Star Race, 8.30 Eastern. And it's all here on FS1 and on the Fox Sports app. With glow lights under the cars, four segments in the race, and the choose cone where every driver gets to choose his lane on every restart. <laughs> it's going to be wild and it's a Bristol baby so it's going to be fun. Oh yeah I can't wait. So here's some audio from Brad Kozlowski's team about lane choice on this restart. Honestly, it's a hard car call for me to tell you which lane because Blaney's obviously been the best car. And you're going to give him the outside, so without a push, you're in trouble. That's tough, man. I, I think if you give him the outside, there's a good chance he drives by you. I'll let you make that one, bud. I hear that. <laughs> so it'll be Kozlowski, Blaney, Penske teammates on the front row. Well, that was pretty awesome turn of events for Roger Penske and this Penske racing. I mean, one, two, three. They already had the top two positions, and then Brad Keselowski, uh, they really snookered them on that green flag stop, so now they're one, two, three. Ryan Newman, the free pass car.
So we will restart to finish stage two. And run one lap. There will be 23 lead lap cars, including Newman, who got the free pass. Now, prior to the pit stop cycle, Cole Custer was 14th, but when he stopped, he took on fuel only, so he's now up to fourth place. Ooh. I don't, I don't know about that move there, Mike. Other than to possibly get him some playoff points or some some you know, points at the end of the stage, but um, we've seen that left front tire on several of these cars really worn. So he's, I don't think he can go a lot further on those left side tires. How about one lap? Yeah, he only needs one, right? That's to right. get those, those stage points. The question is, who else is going to stop after the end of the stage? Well, listen to Coleman Presley, spotter for Brad Keselowski on the number two on this restart. One to go, and there will be a caution the next time by. We're just not Hi, sure. Joey behind. Why? <laughs> Still there, quarter bumper. You are clear. Your house is down behind. Blaney starting to get close now. Half behind. Blaney's almost clear. Just got clear. He is clear. Going with a park. He is clear. One behind. Momentum three quarters. Half up. Half up. Half up. Equalized at half. Split down a little, trying to back up to a push. Split down just a little bit. Split down by one. Three quarter, three quarter, half, split down. Inside, inside, inside. He's not chasing you. Green checker here at the line. Inside. You're good. Nice job. And Brad Kozlowski wins stage two, his fourth stage win of the season. Wasn't easy though, Ryan no. Blaney put up heck of a battle. That car is so good. Gonna have to deal with him a lot today. And Eric Jones got the final stage point in 10th place. Two stages in the books in Kentucky. Brad Keselowski, the winner of stage two.
Stage two complete in Kentucky. Brad Keselowski stage winner. Penske one, two, and four positions at the end of the stage, broken up by Cole Custer in third. I believe I just saw Ryan Priest head to the garage area. Uh, he had been one of the first cars one lap down and has gone there for mechanical reasons. So Martin Truex, the first Toyota in fifth. Alex Bowman, the first Chevy in sixth. Here comes Cole Custer. Get those Goodyear tires. And everybody else pretty much staying out. Right, he had uh, taken fuel only during his green flag stop. We also had penalties, speeding penalties on green flag stops. Brennan Poole, Quinn Hauf, and Corey LaJoy. And, you know, one congratulate that guy right there, Brad Keselowski, in winning stage two. But we were on a, we got some questions for the guy that finished second, Ryan Blaney, especially with that shifter issue he's had. So we're going to dial him up. Hey, Ryan Blaney, this is Jeff and Mike in the Fox Sports Studios. You got a copy? Hey, yeah, I got you. Hey, man, I know your, your teammate there, Brad Keselowski, won that stage. But one, you've got an awesome fast race car, but we want to hear more about this shifter. You know, we've been watching you hold that thing in fourth gear. Obviously, the vibrations coming through that drive line through your hand. See you shaking it out every once in a while. I mean, what's that thing like to drive? I know it's driving good, but what's it like with that shifter issue? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's a good thing it's driving really good. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go one handed through one and two. Um, I had a pop out of gear there early in the race. Took me a second to figure out it popped out of gear, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. I couldn't really get a bungee cord on it, so just kind of deal with it. Keep going, but uh, our advanced auto parts support Mustang's been really fast from the go-go, and just uh, man, it's a shame we couldn't win that stage, but that happens. Yeah, well, we, we definitely had some fun watching you with that bungee cord, so good luck the rest of the way holding it in gear with one hand, and uh, let's we'll see if you can't get it done. That thing's pretty fast. Thanks for talking to us. Ryan Blaney second in stage two. 104 laps to go in Kentucky. Stage two won by his Penske speed teammate as Brad Keselowski picks up his fourth stage win of the season.
101 laps to go in Kentucky. Ryan Blaney. Brad Keselowski will restart on the front row, and Kyle Busch may have an issue. This goes off in the corner and falls over on the right rear, travels on the right rear, lifts the left front now, and feels squirming. Did it happen all of a sudden? Well, it, I felt it pop about five laps before the end of that stage. And then now firing off, restarting right there, just the back of the car feels like a motorboat and it doesn't have any grip. I don't feel anything clanking, like it's not like a bolt came out, the shock's hanging and it's clanking at all, so that's about it. So if you think of, you know, a motorboat, right, what does it do when you try to plane up on the water? The back end is down and the front is up, and that's what he's feeling. He's obviously, you know, exaggerating the situation, but something in that car is making it feel like it's laying over on the right front. When a car travels on the right rear, what does it do? Lifts up the left front so you lose all your downforce. He will restart 10th. Michael McDowell has the free pass. Ryan Priest in the garage with transmission trouble. And we're ready for stage three as they approach the Geico restart zone. Just go back to that perfect storm under green. Mike, where the two car, Brad Keselowski stays out it's on pit road as the caution comes out to get this lead and how that's gonna change his race. And now he's controlling this restart in this race, but he's got two or three very fast race cars behind him. One moving into second, Mark Truex Jr. And the one, <laughs> other one side by side is Ryan Blaney. And here comes Jimmy Johnson into the picture. And they were four wide from about 12th on back all the way through the corner. And don't forget Ryan Blaney doing this with one hand through turns one and two. Jimmy Johnson's going to get there to the outside of Blaney. Kyle Busch in the sixth spot leading this group. Plus four Yeah, from where he started, yeah. restarted. Whatever he was feeling, <laughs> it went away on this restart. Jamie. So good to see Jimmy Johnson running like this, Mike. I talked to him on Race Hub just before our broadcast began, and he told me last week, sitting out for the first time in his entire career, and watching Justin Allgaier behind the wheel, he said, I wasn't going to watch the race. But I came around, I watched it, and I realized how much I love competition, how competitive I am. I can't wait to get back in my race car and be with my guys. Now he's up there running in third. Johnson had to sit out Indianapolis because he tested positive for COVID-19 after his wife experienced some allergy symptoms and tested positive. NASCAR's protocol, you must test negative for two consecutive days to be allowed to come back, and that happened. So Jimmy is racing here. Oh, Kyle Busch into the wall, saves it. I say he was into the wall. He touched it with that right rear quarter panel and rear bumper. May have put that quarter panel on the tire. Don't see a rub, but. And does this wow. have anything to do with what he had been feeling and describing over the radio to his crew chief? But that is definitely going to affect the side force of that race car. Jeff, 95 out of 100 drivers don't make that save. I mean, this guy's got a ton of talent, not just to win races and make the car go fast, but even when you're trying to save a car that's basically come completely around. Look at Kyle Busch just goes wide. He just gets up out of the traction compound, Mike, in the back end, steps around. But that was weird. Something caused that car to jump up the racetrack like that and get sideways. Here's what he said. It's broke. The car is broken. Well, he, he tried to describe it before that restart, but he did such an amazing job in the opening laps after that restart that you thought maybe it was fine, but you could see the back of that car really moving around. Here's a lead change. Truex Keselowski. Remember Martin Truex had his car fail inspection twice this morning, meaning he had to start this race from the back. 
No right. problem for Martin. He's won two of the last three <laughs> here. I said lead change. Here's off of turn four. He gets a big run on Brad Keselowski. He gets to the inside. They're going to drag race side draft down this front straightaway. He's got position on Brad Keselowski to the inside through one and two. So close to being ahead of Brad. But you can see Brad comes back and maintains the lead for now. Five wins here between those two drivers. Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Blaney, this is for third. Well, you know, before the incident there with Kyle Busch, I was just going to say, you think about that. You're, you're Jimmy Johnson. You've been racing in this series since, since 2002. Never to see somebody else driving your race car, and that would have to feel strange. And, and you know, you lose sight of the appreciation, how much you love doing what you do when you do it every week, 38 weeks out of the year, year after year after year. And so as much as you hate to see that experience or what caused that for Jimmy Johnson, it actually might have been something that um, really made a big difference to Jimmy Johnson as he gets back to racing this weekend. Jimmy Johnson had never missed a race in his cup career until last weekend. Brad Kozlowski, Martin Truex fight it out. Parts for Kyle Busch as we take you side by side. Eighty six laps to go. Eighty five now in Kentucky. Martin Truex leading Brad Kozlowski, Ryan Blaney, Jimmy Johnson and Kurt Busch the top five. Time to take a look at today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. And Mike I'm watching Jimmy Johnson. He missed last week the first time in his career. He's back. He appreciates more than ever what it's like to be in competition and he is competitive today running in the top five one of three tracks Kentucky is that he's never won at today gets win number one in Kentucky. Jeff I know I know to my point earlier right now for the top five they are past cup champions but nobody has been better at mile and a half tracks this year than Ryan Blaney bungee cord or no bungee cord he's going to victory lane. 
Well, he won this race a year ago. It was the first and only win for his crew chief, Matt McCall. Kurt Busch did a great job in the booth on Friday night calling the Xfinity race. He's moving his way forward. Kurt Busch gets win number two at Kentucky. Martin has been marvelous since starting last uh, due to an inspection issue. He's two of the last three. We're going to make that three out of the last four. Victory lane for Martin Truex in Kentucky. Can you tell I got to pick first this week? Uh, yes. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> That's your credit one back ones to watch. And here is how Truex took the lead from Brad Keselowski. Well, Brad Keselowski tried every single line and different approach to these corners here at Kentucky to try to hold off the 19 and then he comes up on a lap car of Timmy Hill. And that opens up the door for Mark Truex Jr. to get the lead and Mike. Other than Amarola who's back there in 10th place not really able to recover right now. I don't know if anybody. Well I guess Blaney in third also has anything for this 19 after coming all the way from the rear of the field today. There's Almarola who has led 128 laps today. One of six leaders. And the one who will leave here having led the most laps. There are the lap leaders. Kyle Busch continues to soldier on. He's the last car on the lead lap, 20 seconds off the lead. You saw them carrying, uh, I believe that was a shock in the right hand of the mechanic coming back from the truck to the pit lane. Yeah, my God, it, it, you know, it seems to me, and, and Kyle Busch, one of the best at describing the details of what he's feeling inside the car. And I, I believe that what they feel like happened, maybe the shock didn't come uh, you know, off of the mount, but they believe maybe the shock itself internally may have broke. So he may not be one of our Toyota top performers then again. Truex the leader Hamlin 14th Jones 17th Christopher Bell and there's Kyle. In 24th currently. Sixth place. I think uh, Chase Elliott got caught out on the lap car and Matt DiBenedetto had a full head of steam and went by. Well he's had a full head of steam all day long. Uh, Matt DiBenedetto doing a great job here today. He's got a nice race car doing a great job maneuvering through that lap traffic. I really expected this traction compound in the heat of the day uh, with this longer race. I expected it to move up the racetrack, Mike. I, I thought that the crew was going to get wider. So we see Eric Almarola going to the inside of his teammate, Clint Boyer, not able to make that pass. And I expected this groove to move up and, and just have more two and three wide racing even through the corners, but it just hasn't happened. These cars are actually, with as much downforce as they have, able to. Keep it right down on the bottom as you see Eric Amarola do and Cole Custer. Now, we go to uh, Bristol Wednesday night from the All Star race. This is starting to look like a big Bristol. The groove is the top lane. The bottom lane is where, if you dare, you can try to pass. So with 76 laps to go in Kentucky, how about a Fox NASCAR rank it up?
Truex out front of Brad Keselowski by the same half second he was ahead of him when we cranked it up. Sixty five laps to go in Kentucky where Martin Truex's Toyota has opened up a one point one second lead on Brad Kozlowski and Brian Blaney's Mustang. So here's your race recap sponsored by Advance Auto Parts. That sound is Ryan Blaney's car jumping out of fourth gear as he battled teammate Joey Logano. So he held it in fourth gear until the next pit stop when they offered him a drink and a bungee cord to tie that shifter. Problem was he couldn't see or feel where to tie it 
So he spent the rest of the race holding the car in gear in turns one and two. Eric Almirola, the winner of stage number one, which went green to green and white checker. The only incident of the day was for Matt Kenseth, who uh, cut down a tire after the gun hit the valve stem on a pit stop and it spun around on him, leaving the pits. End of stage two, Brad Keselowski holds off. Ryan Blaney for the stage win at lap 160. Kyle Busch has what seems to be a shock problem on the right rear. Almost lost the car, tremendous save and still runs on the tail end of a lead lap. Martin Truex took the lead from Keselowski and is now 1.9 seconds ahead with 62 to go. And that's your race recap sponsored by Advanced Auto Parts. I want to send a special hello to longtime friend of Fox and colleague Nelson Crozier, who's been doing a bit of sheet time had his own business making ignition systems for these race cars for many, many years and has helped out on our Fox crew and CBS before that for quite a while. Just uh, want to send our good wishes to Nelson Crozier. And Mike, I know Martin Tricks Jr. is out front here by about two seconds on Brad Keselowski, but we actually had some reports that Prior to going to that caution, he had a pretty loose condition where that car got really wide, almost got into the wall. So either Martin Trex Jr. is really pushing the limits of that race car right now, or the balance of it is such where it can jump out from underneath him, you know, pretty uh -oh. easily. Trouble for Jimmy Johnson? Or he's thinking the guy behind him, who is that Kurt Busch? But you would think that means he's coming to pit road, and he is. Blue line. Now, is this scheduled? Jeff, the window is open that you can Gotta make it from here, But I felt like this was a little early. We are here, and he was complaining about a vibration. Well, this could work in his favor if we stay green. Well, you know, when you, you're... you're in that top five position, you got to take some risks. You got to take some chances and try something different. So that vibration might work to their favor. Certainly, uh, you've got them into their window. And a little chassis adjustment took a round out of the left rear there, Jamie. Exactly and what you said, Jeff. They're taking risks. Cliff Daniels, his crew chief, told me today's race was going to be all about doing what the others don't. And Jimmy did have a vibration, as Larry Mack just alluded to. He said it continued to get worse. He didn't want to stay out any longer. And that's the key. Usually your crew chief's going to come on the radio and say, hey, tell me if it gets worse. Tell me if you can hold on to it. If you can hold on to it for five, ten more laps, that'll put us in our window. And that was the communication between Cliff Daniels and Jimmy Johnson. Wow, two drivers that are running each other pretty hard right here. Well, we've seen where neither one of these guys are going to cut anybody any slack after that issue that happened at Martins, or Bristol just a few races ago. Then you see Alex Bowman on pit road putting four tires on his car. But ever since that incident at Bristol where these two wrecked going for the lead and closing laps, we have seen Joey Logano basically push the limits of Chase Elliott every time they're around one another. They just don't give each other an inch. And that will probably continue all season long and maybe beyond. <laughs> Eric Jones is in. Jones who got his best finish of the season with a third in the second race at Pocono. Been a pretty good track for Eric Jones. Finished third here a year ago. Turn on the right rear there. Actually, I'm not sure if he's ever finished outside the top seven in three races he's run here. Guys, even though we've seen two or three drivers hit pit road, I just feel like, especially when you look at Brad Keselowski, that two car, that there are going to be some drivers that run another 15, 18 laps, just stretching his fuel run here. Well, I know what I want to do. I want to come down pit road when the caution comes out like Brad Keselowski <laughs> did. I want to be sitting in my pit box changing four tires. That was great. 
Boy, Blaney had quite a run into the corner there. I think if Blaney gets by Brad Keselowski here, we're going to see a heck of a battle for the lead because I think Blaney's the guy that can battle with Truex Jr. right now. I, I, I'm still surprised talking about Amarola and how dominant he was in the beginning of this race, still back in ninth position, really hasn't been able to move up through the field after losing that track position. This has been quite a battle for ninth place. Almirola and Custer, and now Chris Busher in a Roush Fenway Fort joins that duo. Boy, Cole Custer, nice run for the rookie today. Definitely. Nice run for Chris Busher also. Yeah, knocking on the door of a top 10. Forward with eight of the top 11 spots right now. Truex's Toyota leads. Chevy's for Kurt Busch in fourth and Chase Elliott in eighth. Otherwise, all blue ovals in those top 11. It, it, you know, Mike, you, you never want to fail inspection twice to start the, the, the rear of the field like Mark Truex Jr. did. But when you're coming up through the field, you adjust your car different for being in traffic. And Eric Amarola's exact opposite situation. He's been out front leading this race in clean air. And as we see a great battle between Cole Custer's teammate and Chris Busher might come on through there and utilize that opportunity also. But we're just seeing where once Eric Almirola lost that track position, the handling on his car, not the same. Ooh, Chris Busher puts that right front Close. fender right to the left rear of Eric Amarola. Now Denny Hamlin is in. I'm not sure if it's coincidence or if they told him that Eric Jones left front tire was corded when he made his pit stop. Well I can I can tell you that these guys they feel it. you you know you lose the grip you feel a vibration because of those cords showing you sometimes it'll break that cord other times you just feel the front grip go away drastically. And here's Eric Almirola on pit road. So Larry, I guess these these teams are electing to split this stage in half. Yeah, that's exactly what they've done. So you know if you've run this far, I mean it's not a guarantee, Mike, but if you've run this far on that left front tire, that this gives you a little bit of a comfort level, you can make it to the end. Well, Ryan Newman this time is not giving the leader <laughs> any room. Uh, when he got lapped just prior to the stage end, he knew he'd be the free pass car. That was okay. But right now. Newman is going to be a tough out as they say in baseball that, that was close to being a tough conversation while they were out fishing because <laughs> those are fishing buddies so you see the one car Kurt Busch on pit road and we're told Truex is coming next time. Yeah the 19 had not pitted Mike since lap 147 they actually stayed out those last two cautions but there were 12 caution laps in that area. Jamie. And the one for Kurt Busch said the car was loose, had a vibration, just like so many others that time around. Four tires stopped. Now the 19 of Martin Truex Jr., he just came on the radio. The car started to stutter. He was running out of fuel, had to flip that switch. Martin told James Small as crew chief, we should have pitted one lap ago. We went too far, and I gave up too much time. Funny that Newman came in right with him. Laney in as well. They'll race each other down pit road. Brad Keselowski picks up the lead once again. Now Clint Boyer, the second place car, and Matt DiBenedetto gives up third to make his stop. Chase Elliott in as well. Keselowski, the leader, and Boyer have not stopped. Now last time around Brennan Poole has a tire rub. <laughs> Pretty big one. Well yeah and what's this going to do for our leader Brad Keselowski is this going to put him in the same position as the last time when the caution came out. Uh, lightning wouldn't strike twice <laughs> in the same place would it. By my calculations he should be able to go when when he was last on pit road he should be able to go another four to six laps. When we talked about 
Cliff Daniels, Jimmy Johnson being the first ones on pit road and the risk of being the first car on pit road. Now Brad Keselowski, he's in a different position of being risky by staying out as Clint Boyer hits pit road. Boyer was the second place car. And we're hearing Kozlowski may come this time. Yep. And you're riding with him. And this will cycle the lead to Cole Custer. Jamie. Brad Kozlowski made the call to pit. He said, I'm shattering the left front. I want to come. Jeremy Bullitt said, all right, bring it to us. A four tire stop. Got lucky this time so far. No caution. See there, a little car making a slight adjustment to the left rear before that car leaves the pit road. Ty Dillon coming in behind him. This uh, will leave us 12 cars on the lead lap with Custer and Byron out in front of Christopher Bell and Kevin Harvick. Here come our leaders. That was Brian Blaney getting his lap back. Cole Custer still out there. Let's see what happens with Blaney. He goes by the two car and the 19 of Mark Truex Jr. just ahead of these drivers. So the top eight cars will have to pit. Just a question of when. And when that happens, that will cycle the lead back to Truex again if we stay under green. And Mike, of those drivers, all of them pitted under that last cost at lap 163, except for Christopher Bell in 95. He should be coming any minute now. 41 to go in Kentucky. We'll take you Fox side by side. Wow, things changed quickly here in Kentucky. 
Brennan Poole cut down a tire and a piece of his crush panel ended up on the track and that was debris. Now watch the three of Austin Dillon who is trying not to pit but because of the transition ends up losing the car spinning it around after the caution of wave. The caution is for debris. And now pit road is open under caution. Mike these cars handle really good really good turning left at speed. They don't turn very good to the right on these mile and a half tracks. So William Byron was the leader. He had not pitted. Neither had Kevin Harvick, Michael McDowell, Christopher Bell, Austin Dillon, or Kyle Busch. They are the first six cars and six out of 12 lead lap cars. Yeah, that locked a lot of cars that were good cars uh, that were up in the top, what, 12 or 15. Now some of those cars are a lap down. So we're under caution here with 36 to go. Some sad news out of Langley Speedway where 11 time track champion Sean Beluzzo crashed hard in last night's modified feature and succumbed to his injuries leaving behind wife Terry and three children. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Beluzzo family today. Four laps to go here in Kentucky. Now Wednesday night, the NASCAR Cup All-Star Night, live from Bristol. 7 p.m. is the open. 8.30 Eastern on FS1 on the Fox Sports app is the All-Star Race. And then the NBC crew picks up again and will carry you through the whole rest of the season next Sunday. Cup Series racing from Texas, 3 p.m. Eastern time on the NBC Sports Network. 
Uh, Rick Allen and his crew got their feet wet at the Brickyard last weekend. I don't know, Jeff, after everything that's happened this season, what could they ever find to talk about? But I know they'll <laughs> be able to, and uh, they'll give you a great ride through the whole rest of the season. They certainly will. And, of course, you've got the playoffs and crowning a champion, and, and things just ramp up and intensify as just like they're going to here with 33 laps to go on these restarts we're going to see all of the give and take go completely out the window we got two guys that are really fast have really fast race cars Truex Jr. and Blaney on the front row for this restart ought to be a ought to be a very exciting one so with the timing of the caution six cars were on the lead lap at that time because they had not pitted uh, plus five cars that were still on the lead lap that had pitted that's 11. Clint Boyer is the free pass. That's 12. And 11 cars will take the wave around with one to go. So when we restart, there will be 23 cars on the lead lap. Right now, 33 to go. Jamie? Well, Kurt Busch was talking about something being broken, and, and we saw them bring the shock out. So I went down to his box, and it was interesting. We saw his mechanics and all of his pit crew get around and they watch the video footage from the helmet cams. There it is there. See on top of some of their helmets, they actually have a camera so they could dial it in and see exactly what was going on with the shock. Well, on the last stop, he came in. They took a look at it, but they did not change that shock. So it looks to be that nothing is broken. And it's interesting, Mike, we've heard a couple other drivers say the same thing. They felt like it was broken. They needed a packer change and it felt like they did have a right rear spring in it. Jamie 32 to go when they come back Eric Almirola has led the most laps today 128 Martin Truex has been out in front the second most for 42 there go the 11 wave arounds past the pace car you're allowed to take the wave around if you do not stop during the caution and if all the lead lap cars do stop so that there are no lead lap cars between you and the pace car. So here's your Credible.com race summary. Truex one of eight leaders today, just nine lead changes. 23 cars on the lead lap. Ryan Newman now will be in the free pass position. Five caution flags. Al Marola and Keslowski, the stage winners. So if you look at it, basically fifth through, what is that, 12th place Boyer, they all came in and got fresher tires. So they've got about nine, 10 fresher uh, tires on, on uh, their cars. Now we've not seen tires make a big difference, uh, but we have seen some kind of wear those left front tires out. So I don't know if having 10 or 11 uh, fresher laps on those tires if that might make a difference on one of these restarts as we get closer to the end because Mike I have a feeling this is not going to be the last restart that we see here today. I think you're right. So Truex and Blaney on the front row Keslowski and Kurt Busch last year's winner here going to add one lap and reset uh, the lineup. Harvick and Byron Bell and McDowell Michael McDowell uh, up for eighth place having a good run here today. Larry, in fact, that whole team, Front Row Motorsports, uh, have uh, have really come on this year. Really had quite a season, both uh, McDowell and John Hunter Nemechek. Uh, not sure if that plays into your trends, but uh, let us have it, Larry, with 31 to go in the last Fox Point race of the season. Mike, what may play into the trend is what we see on this restart. We know how wild restarts can be. And looking at the last nine Kentucky races, all the races we've run here, the final caution just north of 30 laps to go. And we have to had two overtime finishes, including last year in 2019 with the Bush brothers beating and banging all the way to the checkered flag. Oh. So you're saying this is the final caution. Jeff and I are saying we don't think <laughs> What I'm saying, I think there's a chance. I think there's a chance. <laughs> okay. Well, one thing's for sure, we're going to get to see two of the best cars here in this race going head-to-head -head on that front row. Mark Truex Jr. leader Ryan Blaney in second place. Of course, you got Ryan Blaney has a teammate, Brad Keselowski, that can help push him into turn one. Kurt Busch for Mark Truex Jr. 
any of the front four can win this. And quite a few that are a little further back. You're going to listen to Kurt Busch's spotter, hey, Tyler off. Green, the number one. And the pace car's in. Let's see if this is the final restart of the day. Five. Ready. Green flag, green flag. No run from behind. Oh, good behind you. Still inside. Inside lane's pushing. No worries. Out back. Four is in line with you now. Four in line. Four in line tight. No pressure from behind. Two still inside. See three wide. Kyle Bush to the inside. One back to the four. Here. Four is tight with you. Christopher Bell. Still inside. Jimmy Johnson jumping from ninth to sixth here. And uh, William Byron right with him in seventh. Truex trying to pull away. Kevin Harvick goes to the inside of Brad Keselowski. Remember, these guys have a little bit fresher tires. See if they can't do something with them. Jimmy Johnson, William Byron. Oh, Keselowski gets a little bit loose. That vaults Johnson up to fifth place. Byron to sixth. Kozlowski back to seventh. Challenging. Passing. Nice recovery. You see William Byron goes up the racetrack. He's going to lose that spot to Kozlowski. Maybe another one to Christopher Bell. Here comes Jimmy Johnson on Kevin Harvick. And they go around Kurt Busch. Johnson, this is going to be for third position. He'll be the first car with the freshest Goodyear tires. And he Try restarted ninth. Blaney's closed it right back up on the leader, and 1.4 back comes the seven time champion. Ooh, Tyler Reddick gets to the outside of Denny Hamlin. As Matt to Benedetto, Chris Buescher go to the inside. Jimmy Johnson third, leading the Hendrick fleet of Camaros. Yeah, I know one guy sitting at home enjoying his birthday. I'd like to see those Hendrick Chevys get a little bit further up there, maybe get a win because it's Rick Hendrick's birthday today. Did you ever win on his birthday weekend? Well, we may or may not have looked it up. I was a little early. <laughs> I gave it to him early. Just Maybe a day three or two. Or four days. That's okay. Better early than late. It's a long, many years ago. Though. Mark Truex Jr. just put up his fastest lap of the race. Matter of fact, I think it might have might be the overall oh, close to it. Jimmy Johnson actually put up the fastest lap of the race, 29.84, just a lap ago. Wait a minute. But they're in ninth place at Kyle Busch. Isn't that car that was broken not long ago? It's broken. <laughs> well, it's broken and it's in. Car in the wall, position. John Hunter Nemechek. And that will put us back under caution. Heavy damage to the nose, to the right rear. John Hunter Nemechek was running 27, two laps down at the time of that. Incident. You know, I heard uh, his teammates, crew chief Drew Blickensturfer, on the radio this morning, and he was saying, Front Row Motorsports has never finished the season with a car in the top 25 in owner points, and right now, coming into this race, both their cars are in the top 25. And uh, Nemechek having a bout with the wall. Yeah, you can puts see. Puts us under caution. You know, we've heard drivers talk about there, where that traction compound is. And you run in it, you build the rubber up, and you build the grip up in that tra traction compound. But if you get higher, as we saw John Hunter Nemechek get higher, there's a lot of debris up there and marbles and allows the car to lose all that grip. And that looks to me like what happened to John Hunter Nemechek. All right, Larry Mack.
Well, Do your magic, buddy. If I'm running in, say, the top 8 to 12, I've already sent the pit box back to the hall. <laughs> <laughs> no way I'm coming. Now, if you're at the back half, absolutely, especially one of those drivers that took the wave around. We're going to see a lot of faking. So much for trends. Here. <laughs> and here's a taker. Just one? They're oh, going to work on that broke car some more. Yeah. <laughs> And a few further back, including Eric Almarola, who's led the most laps today. Eric Jones, Alex Bowman, and Nemechek, who brought out the caution. Uh -huh. Kyle Busch pitted from ninth position, the others from further on back. You get a feeling here in Kentucky, the fun's just getting started. Oh, yeah. Uh, crewman on John Hunter Nemechek's car is swinging for the fences as he tries to pound out that fender, which reminds us Major League Baseball on Fox returns July 25th. Baseball is back, and of course, America's home for baseball this summer, as always. We'll put that pit crew member in the lineup, Mike. There you go. <laughs> Fox and FS1. Here in Kentucky, there is the trophy and the jukebox that awaits the winner. 20 laps from now, not including overtime. Just rubbing it in, Mike. What's that? One of those things I never got to. The jukebox? Yeah. Never, I'm never, sorry, never got Jeff. to take home. <laughs> and I love jukeboxes. I love music. That's a cool trophy. You got to work hard to get that done here. And these boys are ready to fire it up for this final. Well, it could be. I, I don't know, Mike. Now, now, what do you think? Is this going to be the final restart? We got about 20 laps to go. I think, I think there might be, be one more. I think this could be it. You've got Ryan Blaney and five series champions up front. We're told that uh, Hay 19 is B4 on the jukebox. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get told a lot of things in my headset, and some of them you want to hear, and then there's others. But that was a good one. Old Steely Dan. All right. 
Pace car is in. It'll be 19 to go in Kentucky. Who gets the jukebox? Let's find out. Oh, Whoa! Jimmy Johnson gets turned by Keslowski. You could see it coming, Mike. Caution is out. Jimmy Johnson moved down to try to block that big run coming from Brad Keselowski. Jimmy did a similar move on the last restart, was able to make up some spots. Keselowski tried at that time, and he and Jimmy Johnson come together. Looks like Jimmy's got a tire rub as a result. Pretty good chance of a right front. Oh, well, these guys are wondering who was ahead the time of caution. And our scoring has Wow. Delaney. Now, at the time of caution, it is not the moment of caution that determines the leader. So that you can't advance on the yellow, it's the last scoring loop that is crossed prior to the caution flag, where you see Jimmy going around off the bumper of Brad's number two. Yeah, and what you saw, Jimmy was up there pushing the 12 of Blaney, and, and the, uh, Brad Keselowski kind of had a little bit of a run waited a little bit further back. I mean, he did it perfectly, timed it perfectly, and Jimmy just wasn't there quick enough to try to put that block on and turned himself around. That's what, It's really tough. You know, you're focused on the car ahead of you. You're trying to push Blaney if you're Jimmy Johnson, and you're focused on getting up through the gears and pushing him to try to get by Mark Truex Jr. And at the same time, you got to look up in your mirror real quick because it happens fast. Yeah, it's just so hard to anticipate that move that Brad Keselowski made right there. Here's what Brad had to say. Ridiculous, run me off the racetrack. I don't run people off the racetrack like that. Well, you know, this is what we talk about. Inside 20 laps to go, there's just no give and take. And, and when somebody gets a run like that, if you're Brad Keselowski and you have that run, you're not going to lift. You're going to go all the way to the grass if you have to. And if you're Jimmy Johnson, you're going to put as big of a block on as you can. I, I think, you know, when Jimmy looks back at this, he's going to maybe wish he could have gotten down there a little bit quicker to block that run that Brad had going. You can see he sees it coming at the last minute or last second. And Brad just not going to lift. Doesn't look like, other than that one tire rub, doesn't look like much damage on Johnson's car. No, the real damage is just the fact that you're going to have to come down pit road and lose yeah. all that track position, and you were third, and now you're going to be the tail end of the lead lap in, what, 24th. Pretty heavy contact with the right front of Keselowski's car. Hopefully it is clear of the tire. So again, we go back to the last scoring loop crossed before the caution, the moment of caution. Yeah, the only issue here, Mike, is just that that left rear will rub yep. that left rear tire. So when they come down, they'll clearance that. Probably one of the least sensitive areas on the race car aerodynamically is that quarter panel behind the left rear. And Johnson is tail into the lead lap anyway, so. And Mike, it appears to me that Blaney just had crossed the timing loop that's just past the exit of pit road on the racetrack. I mean, he just barely was beyond that. And to your point, it's not the moment of caution. It, unless it's the end of the race, it's where they cross that last loop. And the reason for that, NASCAR installed these scoring loops around every racetrack in multiple locations. And the reason for that rule is so that drivers, when they see the caution flag waving, they can't try to pick up positions at the time of caution so and perhaps can, cause a bigger problem. So let's watch the 12 and the 19 and keep this going. You see Jimmy gives the 12 of Ryan Blaney a nice little push into turn one. Now Blaney's going to have that you know lower line, the shorter line. You see Truex had a little bit of an issue and he checks up. Actually, he might have just checked up because that's when the caution came out. But that 12 still, I think, was a nose ahead. Can I say that in Kentucky, Mike? Winning by a nose? <laughs> yes, you can, especially in Kentucky. <laughs> uh, you see those big puffy clouds? They're not all friendly. There were a couple of sprinkles reported up on the spotter stand. You mean urgency? 
That's what I, I call that in those yeah. clouds. <laughs> That's right. Urgent. That's the flip side of uh, Jukebox Hero, I think. Uh, these little pop-up showers have been a problem here all weekend. It, hey, it's July. It's Kentucky. This is the weather you're going to have. They just kind of come up in the Ohio River Valley out of nowhere. And sometimes, in Sheldon Creed's case, that's a friendly rain shower because at the end of stage two in the truck race, he was the winner. Uh, when it continued to rain here last night, NASCAR called it. Creed the winner. Austin Sindrick doubled up in the Xfinity Series. Double header here. Christopher Bell having a good run here in sixth place. Now Martin Truex was the most popular pick to finish first or second by the players in our free Fox Bet Super Six game today. The jackpot's up to one hundred twenty thousand dollars and after today it goes away. So uh, a while back I was told that forty seven players had five of the six answers. Uh, drivers in the correct positions to cash in five of the six. Nobody had exactly six and maybe we can get a further update here. Well you know what that tells me Mike nobody went with the picks other than Kurt Busch that I predicted before this race started. So Martin Truex can he get any help from behind on this next restart. Tell the four to get on me Bush, please. we got to go. <laughs> Martin Truex Jr. asking for a little help from Kevin Harvick. So he's assuming he'll restart on the inside because every leader has chosen the outside lane for the restarts today to get up into that uh, traction compound down in the corner. Well, and, and what you have to deal with if you're on the front row, as we just saw with Jimmy Johnson and, and uh, Brad Keselowski, but let's say you're Ryan Blaney and you've got Kurt Busch behind you. Kurt Busch would like to give you a push you know to get himself in a better position but at some point he's he might want to take you three wide if he has a run and he can get position to the outside so you can never be guaranteed that person once they get to your rear bumper is going to stay there. A little more audio from Martin Truex and company. It's all good man you'll be better than him all day so get a nice restart here you can drive that past me either way so don't stress. I ain't stress. <laughs> the, the one that stressed is the crew chief James Small. <laughs> yes, giving uh, his driver a pep talk. <laughs> I think I think just about all the necessary adrenaline is right there, up in those uh, front four spots. So Blaney, if he chooses the outside, and he likely will, or did, excuse me, he did. He'll have Kurt Busch behind him, last year's winner. Truex will be on the inside with Kevin Harvick behind him. Now behind them what role will Brad Keselowski in the two or Christopher Bell in the 95 play in this restart. Well we know what Brad Keselowski is going to do we just saw it happen on the last restart. Go to the inside and keep yeah, his foot to the floor. Absolutely. All right will this be the final restart. Is this the run for the roses. Pace cars in it'll be 13 laps to go. Blaney on the outside Truex on the inside here we go to settle the Quaker State 400. Oh look at Kevin Harvick taking him three wide goes to the inside. Kozlowski. No way is he going to steal one here. Kozlowski trying to go with him. One lane. Oh Truex gets loose. Unbelievable three wide for second place as Kevin Harvick takes the lead three wide back in that next row back also. This would be unbelievable for Kevin Harvick. Never won here at this track. Oh, four wide. Four Look wide. at him fan out four wide in the middle. Ooh, that could get too close for comfort. McDowell got jostled around there. I don't see any way <laughs> we don't get another caution here, Mike. This is nope. wild and crazy. McDowell and Logano, both the yellow cars getting bounced around. Yesterday, Kevin Harvick's son won his first ever go kart race. Kevin said the pressure was on him today and look at this. Well the pressure's really on him right now Mike because Mark Truex Jr. really cut down that lead that last time through three and four. Let's go back and watch this restart. No now, push. And, well this time Brad Keselowski decided to push Kevin Harvick instead of go to the inside and that gave Kevin Harvick the momentum to go to the inside and make it three wide. 
I really thought Truex Jr. and Blaney were going to get back to the outside of Harvick down the back straightaway, but it just didn't happen. Well, Truex got loose in the middle of the corner, so couldn't mount a charge down the back stretch. And we're coming to 10 to go. Kevin Harvick has won at every track on the circuit, but this one. Well, he could not have executed a better restart from that third position to try to get that first win here at Kentucky than he did right there. So there is the not very long list. Yes, the Roval at Charlotte. He's won on the Oval, okay? But he's never won in Kentucky. Nine laps away from eclipsing his previous best finish of fifth. Mike, he just ran the fastest lap that he has run in this race at lap 258. Fifth place, Kurt Busch, Cole Custer. Well, and we talked about Kevin Harvick, Rodney Childers trimming that race car out, showing us such great speed, straightaway speed, but it needs clean air. He has that clean air now. What's he going to do with it? Because that car has been struggling further back in the field all day long. And these two have disappeared from Ryan Blaney and Brad Keselowski. The two Penske teammates will be left to uh, fight it out for third. And then Kurt Busch and Cole Custer, you saw a second ago, they're three and a half back. It's a runaway for Harvick and Truex. Right down here, turns three and four is where Kevin's really struggling. And we saw Truex, there he goes to Way the low. inside of Kevin Harvick. Still there, clear. He'll come back, he'll be inside into one tight. I think tight Kevin here. might be able to hold on to that outside through one and two, but it's three and four where he's really struggling. Oh, oh, Truex pushing the issue. Not there, though. Well, Truex wanted to get all four tires up into the traction compound. He got two up there. That helped. But now he's down on the bottom again. Oh, caution is out. Matt Kenseth. Oh, looks like he got some help from Ryan Newman. He goes around, not all the way around, just gets sideways and heads down pit road. They used to be teammates. At uh, Roush Fenway. But that's the second spin of the day for Kenseth. The first one at lap 154 brought out the first of the race's cautions for cause. And we've had four more here in the last well, 22 laps. Whew. Man, Larry, I'm taking your, your breath for I'm this taking last your week. trends book and I'm burning it <laughs> after today. How's that? Well, I'm just kind of glad that uh, we're at least having cautions here in the yeah. latter part of the race. Kevin I'll... Harvick was 19th when those green flag pit stops started back at lap 208. We've had four cautions since then, and he's the leader. Well, it hasn't Mark? fared too well for the leader in our last two restarts, no, Mike. That's true. The closer. Out in front with six to go. I liked in his interview, Jeff, what, 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 that you did with him on the pace laps where he says, that, you know, as, as we all know as dads, you're so much prouder of what your kids do than what you can do. And yesterday, his son Keelan won his first ever, first ever win in the go-kart. You see Kevin is holding his mask uh, as he poses with the family. That's Piper, uh, their daughter in the picture as well with Delena. And Keelan. Could the Harvick score the weekend sweep and go for two for two? Stay tuned.
getting set to settle it at Kentucky Speedway maybe this time will be the charm and the final restart of this race in the last 20 or so laps four caution flags and the closer Kevin Harvick has found his way to the front not sure Martin Truex though is done with him though Jeff no Mike he's not and it, uh, what's going to happen it, it all dic is dictated by what happens in the second row so you've got Ryan Blaney and Brad Keselowski they're the pushers they're the ones that are going to decide do I push one of these drivers forward or do I try to split them and make a move just like Kevin Harvick just did from that third position I don't think this thing is over by any means yet. Ah, but Kevin Harvick got a push from Brad Keselowski in the fifth position so maybe it's the third row that's the control <laughs> row here that's true. it could be <laughs> well, we're about to find out as we're set for what could be the final restart. Is this a, is it the fourth or fifth time we've said this could be the final restart? Four to go right now. Harvick and Truex on the front row. Blaney and Keselowski, row two. Kurt Busch and Cole Custer, row three. How about the rookies? Custer in sixth. Christopher Bell in tenth. Tyler Reddick in 13th. Three rookies in the top 15 right now. Here's some team 19. I'll do the best we can, Clayton. I don't know why you're like stressed out more than I am here. You need to relax. Oh, I'm relaxed. I just, dang it, that car is supposed to have to leak two times. <laughs> spotter Clayton so, is. Yeah, Martin's trying to calm down his spotter. Oh my gosh. Listen, you don't think everybody on this team gets emotionally involved in everything that goes on out there? Absolutely, man. A lot on the line for every right. one of these guys. I want to see what the one and the 41 do from the third <laughs> row. Do either of them push somebody into a position to jump out and take the lead? Mike, I'd watch that two car, Brad yeah. Keselowski in fourth. This is where this race was won in overtime a year ago. Kurt Busch restarted in the outside of row two and four. Yeah, I don't think from the fifth position or sixth position you can win it, but from this second row, if Brad Keselowski gets a great start and kind of fakes Kevin Harvick, he could easily be three wide as they go into turn one. All right, Daniel Suarez got the free pass. 26 lead lap cars. Here we go. That's going to be Cole Custer to the outside of Brad Keselowski, putting him three wide. He got a push for Matt Benedetto. Can he stay in it in that upper groove? Here comes Kevin Harvick back to the outside of the, our leader, Mark, or, uh, Martin Truex Jr. Look at the run oh, that Custer they can, has. They touch. Here comes Custer. He had a big run down the back, down the straightaway. How did Mark Truex Jr. get to the outside of the four car, Kevin Harvick? Here comes Blaney to the inside, three wide. Custer White to the flag. outside, four wide. White flag waves, one to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Next flag ends it. They're banging off one another. Custer to the lead. Oh, heavy tire rub on the four car, Kevin Harvick. A rookie is going to win Kentucky. Can you believe it? I never would have believed it till now, Mike. Custer, Truex, DiBenedetto, Harvick, Blaney. Wow. Off the final turn. Rookie Cole Custer wins Kentucky. Can you believe it? Incredible. Incredible. That last restart, I can't wait to go back and watch this. That's going to put Cole Custer in the all-star race for Wednesday. That is all but unbelievable. You saw the stat a moment ago. Eric Jones sixth place finish the only time a rookie has finished at this tough tough racetrack oh, in the, the top man. 15. <laughs> you believe it? That was the best car I've ever driven mine. Hey this place is my track man. Me and David we got this place figured out. <laughs> he certainly has that final restart figured out. Take him four wide. Cole Custer for Gene Haas and Tony Stewart, crew chief Mike Shiplett, Andy Houston the spotter. What a restart and what a shootout. I saw Stewart Haas Ford winning this race, Mike, but it wasn't going to be Cole Custer for a long time until that last restart. Big celebration going on here. 
for this young rookie. So the Quaker State 400 goes to the rookie who last week had his best career finish fifth at Indianapolis and only his second career top 10. Now he's won here before in Xfinity. Now Cole Custer is a NASCAR Cup Series winner. Woo. <laughs> Jamie. Cole Custer's entire team running out in this moment. They can't help themselves but to celebrate. They've got their masks on, but their young rookie driver just took it to victory lane on that final restart. Cole, a rookie, you are a winner in the Cup Series. What just happened on that restart? How good was that car? Man, we were we were so good all day. Our car was so good. I mean, obviously, it wasn't the easiest track to pass on, so we're kind of stuck back there. But that was the best car I've ever driven in my life. Uh, everybody at SHR brought an unbelievable car. I mean, Mike and Davin on the box, I mean, that was unbelievable. I mean, Gene, I can't stress enough how thankful I am for him taking a shot at me. It definitely was not the start of the year that we wanted. I mean, we were definitely way off at some places. But this, I mean, this was by far, I mean, unbelievable car we put it all together and I, I just can't thank everybody enough Cole typically for a rookie it takes about three years to get to victory lane describe what it's like for a rookie especially right now you don't even get practice in these cars yeah I mean it's not easy I mean it's definitely you got to kind of adapt as much as you can and I think we've gotten better and better at that but um, it's just it's just unbelievable I mean I, I didn't think that we were coming here going coming to win I mean now we're gonna be in the all-star race I don't even have to run the open so I don't know. Hopefully I make it to Bristol. <laughs> Congratulations. Go celebrate. That team is pumped up. What a finish for Cole Custer, Mike. The four laps he led today are the first laps that he has led in the Cup Series. When he made a liar out of me too, Mike, I said it couldn't win it from that third row, fifth or sixth. Well, let's go back and see exactly how he ended up getting the lead. Here's the uh, leaders of Truex and Kevin Harvick battling it out, but Cole Custer comes a big run, little contact between Harvick and Truex Jr. Harvick goes up wide. That opens the door for the 19. Now when they get side by side and now three wide because of Blaney to the inside, that opens up the door for Cole Custer to go to the outside four wide. Watch him slam and bang here. Four wide for the win. How lucky was Cole, Cole Custer to just clear Mark Church Jr.'s front bumper right as those other three cars were slamming doors. You see Blaney goes over that jump. Oh, I see his car just got out of control as he went over that huge bump down the apron. But see how Cole Custer just clears the 19's front bumper to squeeze by and squeeze into the lead. Well, he may owe a thank you to Matt Benedetto because it was Benedetto from the outside of the fourth row that gave him the shove on the restart that started all this. Let's watch on board from Brad Keselowski's roof camera. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> what I love about that, Mike, he never checked up. Brad Keselowski no. never, I don't think anybody ever checked up through all of that melee. Let's go back to Jamie. Martin Truex Jr. brings it home second, led 56 laps today, and he did it all from starting in the back at a place where you guys said it was going to be hard to pass. What a finish, Martin. Take us through that last <laughs> couple of laps. Yeah, it was fun, you know. Uh, can't say enough about the guys, you know, and the auto owners, Camry, uh, everybody back at JGR. Just, um, you know, went to work this week and tried to kind of get back to what we used to do here. So, uh, you know, just hats off to the guys, James and everybody. I mean, just an unbelievable race car. And, you know, at the end there, just, um, you know, a bit unlucky losing the lead to Blaney on that first restart by, you know, a couple thousandths. And then uh, again to the four when the caution came out, we were side by side. So, yeah, that's just um, that's kind of the way these things go sometimes. But uh, really proud of the effort, you know, super fast race car and feel like we're back in the game now. Martin Truex ends up second by a quarter of a second. Matt Benedetto third. Cole Custer, the rookie wins Kentucky and he is headed into the All-Star race Wednesday night on FS1. We'll be right back.
Ah, uh, Cole Custer checking his phone. <laughs> He's talking to somebody. <laughs> Might be talking to Dad there. Yeah. Folks, we're gonna. This last two laps were so incredible. We're gonna show it all to you from our aerial coverage. You see, Brad Keselowski checks up right here. That allows the 41 Cole Custer and Matt DiBenedetto giving them a nice push as they go three wide into turns one and two. You see those guys up front battling it out. Brian Blaney not able to get in front of Cole Custer. The 19 of Truex and Harvick make a little bit of contact right there. That's what allows Truex to get to the outside of the four, but it's this move right here. Blaney to the inside and Cole Custer to the outside. Here's the moment, four wide on the white flag lap. And Blaney, I didn't even know how he kept that car going straight. Well, I do know he slammed into the four car. Well, when he came up into Harvick, that allowed Custer to scoot away. He was on board with Blaney. Oh. Wow. Oh, that little bit of contact helped put Cole Custer into victory lane. Jamie with uh, Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick brings it home fourth. And Kevin, I know the comments on the radio, that car was not good for most of this race. No. Were the adjustments that good, or were you just on it at the end? No, we got lucky with that caution and got track position, got a couple good restarts there. And then we're in position to win, you know. Uh, made it through turns one and two, and then my, Martin just misjudged on the back stretch and, and kind of got into the back of us, and I had to check up. And uh, the next thing I know, I was, you know, four wide on the front straightaway, and then the 12 hit the drain. and. Went back up the racetrack, but just got to thank everybody from uh, Hum Brothers Pizza, uh, Bush Light, uh, Jimmy John's, everybody from Mobile One, Haas Automation, everybody at Stuart Haas Racing, uh, continuing to bring great cars. And just congratulations to uh, Cole Custer. Uh, obviously, last week he was a big part of our win, and to get to victory lane in your rookie year is a big deal. So uh, really happy for Gene and everybody at Haas Automation, and especially for Cole. He works really hard. Thank you. Cole Custer is the first rookie to win in the Cup Series since Chris Buescher in 2016. What a day and what a finish. How about Matt DiBenedetto who shoved Custer into a position to challenge for the lead and himself wound up third. Matt DiBenedetto comes to his worst track on the circuit. I think his average finish here in previous races was 30 something. What a turnaround, Matt. I mean, you've never been with this team here, but finishing third, how strong was that car today? Oh, Jamie, we had a really, really fast car. I was, that thing was flying. Um, and this was a big race for us, having uh, Menards, driving the Menards and Quaker State Ford Mustang in the Quaker State 400. So I had a lot of pressure on me. They wanted me to win pretty bad since it was the title sponsor, but, um, Man, I'll tell you what, with uh, I think seven to go, we were 18th because um, of how we were really good. Top five all day, car was super fast. And uh, the way the pit cycle stuff uh, worked out, it trapped us lap down. And I wish you could hear my audio. I was one pissed off guy with about seven laps to go. <laughs> and we made some, my spotter Doug Campbell deserves a lot of credit. Our car was super good. We made some monstrous moves to go around the outside and pass most of the field. So uh, congrats, congrats to Cole Custer. I'm glad we could give them the, the shove of his life to get up there and win that thing. So uh, I'm in a better mood now, Jamie. So that's the good part. Another top five from Matt DiBenedetto. Well done. Cole Custer, the winner. Martin Truex, Matt DiBenedetto, Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch, the top five. Wednesday, we're at Bristol for Stock Car Racing's All-Star Night. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with the Open, followed by the All-Star Race at 8.30 Eastern time right here on FS1. And don't forget NASCAR Race Hub weeknights. Get all your news from the Hub, 6 p.m. Eastern. NASCAR's annual trip to Kentucky. Saw a couple of spins. Saw a big effort, saw a lot of side-by-side, -side. saw a seven-time champ turned around, but in the end, four wide with one to go, and rookie Cole Custer scoring a surprising victory.